Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Good morning. Welcome to Undisputed. I'm Jenny Taft with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Guys, how we doing? Uh, mm. Pairs and needle, but I'm doing okay. Doing okay? <laughs> Uh, I, for one, am eager to talk about Damian Lillard in a few minutes here on the show and some of the rather puzzling things he said about me on Twitter yesterday. But we'll wait on that because first we got to talk about the self-proclaimed king. How about you leave people alone? How about that? How about I (laughs) be honest about people like I always am? I like the honesty. And we are very much looking forward to that response to Damian Lillard. But the Lakers did get it done last night. So let's start there. LeBron and the Lakers finally snapped their three-game skid with an exciting win over the Nuggets last night. LeBron led the way with 29, but it was Kyle Kuzma who knocked down the game-winning shot with less than a half a second to go. Kuzma finished with 25, and after the game, LeBron said that in order to win a title, Kuzma needs to be their third-best player or second-best player if he or Anthony Davis are having an off night. Shannon, your biggest takeaway from last night. What was it? Uh oh. For the first time all year, I'm concerned. Mm. Um, let me start with the what's concerning to me. The Nuggets sat their entire starting lineup in the fourth quarter. And those guys went 12 of 18, 67% from the floor, three of three from the three point line, and once scored on eight straight possessions until Anthony Davis got a block with 115 left. Mm-hmm. Skip, that's that that's not that's not Dame Lillard and CJ mm-hmm. and Melo. That's not Paul George, Kawhi, Sweet Lou, Will, and Trez. Yep. Those are backups. Those are the Nuggets' backup. Yep. And you couldn't get stops. Skip, at one point, it looked like Keystone Cops. They were backdooring them. And then, the, and then Kuz and, and LeBron and, and, and AD, they looking at each other. Dion, what is it like? I thought you, no, you. I thought what? And it's in the basket. Mm-hmm. That was very, very disappointing because I think at the end of the day, yes, I, I know that I'm glad to see they got their offense going. Yep. But you're going to have to get stops down the stretch. Mm-hmm. And that's what's the most important thing. Can you get stops when you absolutely need to? Yeah. You're down by one or two points. Can you get a stop? And then can you capitalize on that? The mm-hmm. positive things of what I saw, Skip, they finally got their offense going. And AD was extremely aggressive in the first half. He was crashing the boards. He was not selling for three-pointers and 20-foot jump shots. Mm-hmm. He was putting the ball on the floor. He was getting to the basket. Misses, he was coming over the top, ramming it home as you saw it by the last shot at the end of the uh, end of the half. Yep. Um, LeBron started slow but got aggressive in the second quarter. Didn't score his first basket until, what, eight minutes left mm-hmm. in the second quarter. Yep. But he had 12 points to assist in that quarter. Um, we had a Danny Green sighting. You did. Because, Skip, here's the thing with Danny. He's going to have to give us something on the offensive end because he's not the defender that he once was. So if he's not knocking out open, open shots, and he's not the defender Avery Bradley is. He's not the defender he was was. Yeah. Now he becomes a liability mm-hmm. because they don't have to split space the floor because they don't have to worry about him knocking down shots. Now LeBron has a tougher time. Yeah. Now they can bring the double tw- team a lot quicker to AD. Yeah. So that was that's Skip. I saw some good things. They shot the ball from the three better. Mm-hmm. They shot the ball from the floor better. They finally the offense finally started looking good. But for a team that was so good defensively during the regular season mm-hmm. and in the first three games, uh, the defensive rating was very high. Yeah. I don't like what I saw the last, and that's puzzling. And so I, I get it. Well, they clinched it. It's hard, Skip. At some point in time, I don't care if you clinched two months ago. Mm. I'm not going to just let you drive by me and put the ball in the basket. My pride won't let me do that. Mm-hmm. So where is the pride? At some point in time, he's like, you know what? Enough is enough. Hold on. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't Jokic. That's not... MJP? Mm-mm. That's who who are you? How'd you get in? Who let you mm-hmm. in the ball game? Yep. So that's what's concerning to me, Skip. I'm glad I saw the offense pick up. I'm glad they shot the ball better from the floor. I'm glad they shot the ball better from the three. They're still missing too many free throws. Geez. Mm-hmm. Skip. I, I, mm. I'm concerned for the first time this year, Skip. I honestly I can honestly say I'm a little concerned. Mm. Interesting. So, we had yet another bizarre night in the bubble. <laughs> because I watched your Lakers play the best offensive game they've played in the bubble and by far the worst <laughs> defensive game they've played in the bubble. Maybe the worst defensive game they've played all, all year. You, you Seriously, right, right. I'm yep. not exaggerating. Yep. Because to amplify your point, 
the Denver Nuggets backups play the whole fourth quarter. And if I could just detail who those backups are quickly here, we, we've got... I'm glad you got a sheet because you weren't going to be able to name them by name without it. We got Bates Jopp out of Ohio State, who was a second-round pick. We got P.J. Dozier, who wound up missing the one free throw that might or might not have won the game. Right. I don't know. But he's out of South Carolina, undrafted. We got Monte Morris, the second-round pick out of Iowa State in his second season. By the way, P.J. has bounced around to three teams in three years. Then we have my man, Bull Bull, who... I am intrigued by and impressed right. by at seven feet, two inches tall, but he was a second round pick just this year. So he's a rookie right. out of Oregon. Right. And by the way, at Oregon last year, he averaged 21 and 10 and three blocks, but only played nine games and got hurt. Right. Okay. He, he showed me flashes of brilliance last night yeah. because at seven, two, he can actually move around. He I mean, he's got kind of he guard skills. No, it's impressive, he but he still, can't. If he could ever put just a little bit of meat on that frame, just a little bit, but he's only 20 years old, so he's out there against a man, I mean a man's man in LeBron James, right. and he's going to have some issues right. trying to hold his ground in the paint right. against the starting Lakers. Okay. And then we got uh, our man, uh, Plumley. Plum, Mason Plumley, who's he's bounced around he's a little solid. bit, but he's a solid player out of Duke. Again, he was a, a late first-round pick. Okay, so that's your, your second five playing against your Lakers. Mm -hmm. So I sit back and I think they'll pull away, they'll pull away, they'll pull away. No, 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 no. And to your point, I'm, I'm looking at what happened in the fourth quarter with these Denver backups and Bates Jopp goes three out of four and Mason Plumley goes three out of four and P.J. Dozier goes three out of four and Monte Morris goes three out of five and Bowl took one shot and missed his one shot. But still... Man, they're they're lighting it up. They're they're shooting 67% in the yeah. fourth quarter. And by the way, lest I forget, I don't want to leave this stone unturned. The starters for this game while they played, which is sort of three quarters ish right. Right. for this team, the starters went 24 of 38. That's 63 percent of the shots the starters made. Yes. So remember, you have Michael Porter Jr. He went six for six. You got Jamal Murray going six for ten. Uh, Millsap went five of seven. Jokic four of seven. So they're they're just pouring in buckets from everywhere. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're uncontested <laughs> buckets. Where I'm just saying, do you guys want to even play at all? I saw an AD siding in the first half, but I only saw it on offense. Right. And I saw him crash the board at the end of the half. Mm -hmm. So I got that. But then. That same guy who had six rebounds at halftime, in the second half, AD had zero rebounds. So his effort flagged. It just dropped. I, I don't know what happened. Right. But he wasn't playing nearly. He went one for four in the second half mm -hmm. from the field. Well, that's like bad AD. Right. So we went from great AD, I'm plugged in, I'm here. What was? What did he post yesterday? I'm, I'm here for you, right. dog, right? Yeah. Well, he was there for LeBron in the first half. I'm not so sure he was there for you guys in the but second half. But he did get to the free throw line. Okay, he did, and he made 9 of 12, which is pretty good. He missed three. Like, he's been a three free throw making machine, so I was surprised. I think it's that. contagious. I think somebody okay. misses one early, and then everybody starts missing. Okay, so the, the very good news here is that your team made 14 of 29 three-point shots. That's, that's a breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's contagious enough because I don't think anybody's going to play in this finale yeah. whenever it is. But, but, I don't they play Wednesday? I think they play I Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday, but nobody, I mean, the starters, I doubt, are going to play in that right. game. And certainly LeBron played high minutes last night for a, you know, just a seed game. That's he played what I'm saying. 30 38 minutes. minutes. Wow. I guess, nice. I guess backups. It's the backups. But it, it put Vogel in a bad spot because Mike Malone says, eh, I give up. I'm pulling my starters for the whole fourth quarter, and it put Vogel in a bind because does Vogel respond in kind and say, okay, if you're not going to play yours, I'm not going to play mine. I think his game plan was, his big picture game plan was to let them finish the game, then rest them the rest of the way until the playoffs. Correct. Right. Okay. Yes. All right, so that brings me to the last shot. LeBron James had what I call a rare hot hand from distance, and he heated up through the second half, and he'd made two threes in the fourth quarter. Right. We don't often see that. Would he wind up from, from three? He was five of 11. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty, pretty great. Yes. And so we come to the last shot, and the game is tied. And I'm thinking the, the obvious play here against the backups and bowl bowl is for LeBron just to say, give me the ball and get out of my way, and I'm going to get to the rim. That's, that's to me. You just need 
again, if he's a little afraid of the free throw line, all you have to do in this circumstance is make one out of two free throws right. to win the game. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Just go on bowl, bowl, and get hacked. Right? He'd done it before. He could do it again. Right. So that was the obvious play to call, or for LeBron just to call it in the huddle, just, I got this. Just come and pick for me, and, and I will get this finished. Right. I also thought that he was feeling so good. He When he gets that kind of limp-wristed, just easy, sweet delivery. Especially from the side of the floor hey. that Kuzma took it on, because no, that was the side there. that he had got hot on. Because he was just shooting it easy yes. and free, yep. and, and he was swishing them. Yes. And, and when he gets in that groove, I thought, okay, well, maybe this is the night I'll give him a break. Just pull up and shoot one. <laughs> Whatever you want to shoot, shoot it for the win. Okay. And I was stunned that Frank Vogel got away with calling a play for Kyle Kuzma because it felt like LeBron's game to finish because he was really good. No, no, seriously yeah. good on offense. He was very good. Well, I mean, Skip, he had one rebound. Okay. I mean, he, he right. had zero in the first okay. half. In the second half, he had one for the okay. entire game. But I thought, Skip, and to your point, I thought once AD flashed, I say AD's going to come get the ball. LeBron will go get it right back. Yeah, and right they'll back. run something. But once I saw him pass the ball to AD, and I'm like, he's not coming to get the ball. He goes through, and I see Kuzma. I'm like, they're running this for Kuz. Curl right off him. Yes. Split right out to the corner. Bobo was lost for a second. Right. But then he came, and Kuzma launches over seven feet two, and it's not that easy. No. Because that kid, he can He can jump. test everything. Yeah. Woo! And he contested this, so yes. Kuzma had to let it go a little higher yes. than I think he wanted yes. to, which might have actually helped the shot a bit. Because <laughs> the better the arc, the better the chance yes. you have of making the basket. And it ripped. Yes. And Kyle Kuzma, I have told you again and again and again, this is just me. And maybe you say this is overstatement, but I don't think so. I believe this team is going to go as far as he takes them because LeBron said after the game, we're, we're going, only going to win a championship if he's our third best player. Right. He needs to be, and right. he hasn't been all year. No. He has struggled with his new role. His numbers are down across right. the board. Right. Well, I, I've told you, I told you yesterday, I said the closer for this team should be this kid mm -hmm. because he is completely fearless. And, and sometimes he posts some things on social where I just say, what are you thinking? Right. Well, he doesn't really think about exactly. anything. That's the point, which is great. Well, Skip, he, he is a blessing and a curse because he's fearless. Mm -hmm. He'll shoot you in the game, but he'll damn sure shoot you out of it. He can, but I like him in these shot moments where, yeah. where somebody's got to have the guts just to pull the trigger. He was ultra aggressive he last pull. night. He was getting to the basket, Skip, and it was one of those nights where he seemed, he, he felt it, and, 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 and like I said, I think Frank Vogel knows that, you know what, let's see if we can give this kid some confidence. Let's see. If sure. We, because think about it, Skip. You got two guys now. You got AD and you got LeBron. And normally most people would think one of those two guys are going to take the last shot. But to say, you know what, let's give this kid mm -hmm. some confidence. Let's see if he can pull this off. And so that should have immense uh, uh, confidence builder for him, knowing that he was allowed to take the final shot with LeBron James and AD, the two dogs mm -hmm. on the team. And you know what? The coach says, you know what? He drew up this play for me. True. No, I, I like that as long as LeBron is good with it. Yeah. And I was a little surprised. I guess he thought this game doesn't really matter. Right. It's it's just a, it's it's almost like a preseason type game to them because the playoffs are about to start in a few days and they don't need this. They're clinched. So I guess he backed off and said, ah, I guess I'm okay with this. Uh I was I wanted to see LeBron go for the win. I think LeBron needed it also. No, I, I think the thing it was for me, LeBron was going to probably look for a shooter. Um, I don't think he was going to look to take that shot, although I thought AD at the beginning when I saw LeBron inbounding the ball, I said he's going to pass it to AD and get it right back. Mm -hmm. But then, Skip, he would not have had a time to run the play. So if they had done what you would have asked, give the ball to AD, get it right back, now you got to go up and take the shot. He would have to go quite, right. uh, go right. fast. There, so yep. you're not going to be able to pass it to anybody. you got to go just pull up. It was a great play design. They say they had worked on it somewhat uh, uh, go, going into the uh, break uh, in the bubble. They did. And it's great to see there's nothing like calling a play skip in practice, running it in practice, getting an opportunity to run it in the game, yeah. and it works. And it worked. Um, I don't know if you can call it again. <laughs> you you might have given it up. You know, somebody will be looking for it next yep. time, right? Because they're going to switch that. They, yep. That's what Bowl Bowl and Mason Plumley should have done. If anything comes, we're switching all. So, speaking of bizarre... I can't quite figure out what Frank Vogel is trying to pull off here, uh, but on Saturday evening, 
he featured Quinn Cook for the whole game. Right. And Quinn Cook stood yeah. in, stood up for yeah. himself. And LeBron has called Quinn Cook as good a catch-and-shoot guy as there is in the league, right. and I second that. He will take and make big shots. Unfortunately, LeBron twi- tried him twice in the last three minutes right. against Indy right. when they led by three with right. three and a half minutes left. Quinn got two really good looks and missed them both. Right. At that point, he had made five of seven threes, right. which was, by their standards, extraordinary. Yes. Right? So, again, you would think, well, Quinn Cook just earned his way in the rotation. And last night, DMP. Quinn Cook DNP'd. He didn't play a lick. And the night before, and two nights before, Skip, what? remember, Deion Waiters DNP. D- DNP. And then he got uh, some big, some good minutes last night. He played well. He's aggressive, Skip. He'll put the ball. Five of eight. Just, he getting to the basket. Yep. Now, he might launch up a three like, Dion, what the hell are you doing? But he's going to put the ball on the floor and try to get to the rim. <sighs> he's just, he struggles, Skip, with lateral and to stay in front of someone because he picks up two, three fouls a game just by body hip checking the guy mm-hmm. because he can't slide and stay in front of the guy. Yep. So another Vogel chemistry experiment, but we're, we're out of games now. Yeah. Like how many more times? Even the, Harden was out there. I'm like, I'm like how you, what, what, first of all, where did you even come from? So what is your identity exactly going into the playoff stretch? Because no KCP. Because normally, you just give, you know, normally KCP starts. Yep. He didn't play. So he play. I, Wasn't he banged up or something? I th- yeah, because remember, I think he took a, took a shot to the ribs yep. or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's going to be interesting to see, Skip, how he sets this lineup. And then Caruso has been struggling. He's been struggling, Skip. I mean, there's no other way around it. He's struggling. Plays hard. He plays hard. Yep. But play it hard on this center when you came, when you're turning the ball over and your, 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 and your plus minus isn't very good. And all of a sudden yesterday, when I least expected it, Montrez Harrell announced he's back. Yeah. In the bubble. So, again, the Clippers, who I, I believe are your chief rival in mm-hmm. the West, they have not had their full roster together except for 12 games this year. And now they're about to get the full roster back. Yeah. But there's no time to get ready. Ain't for no, the pra- first ain't no practicing. No, everything is just shoot around. Okay, yeah. we, this is what they, if they do this, this is what we're gonna do. Ain't no practicing the, the, the training camp, the mini camp type stuff. Skip, that's over. Yep, it's so over. Now. I have no idea what kind of shape Montrez is in. Obviously, he's been grieving the loss of his right. grandmother for quite a while. He ain't in basketball shape. I would doubt it, and I don't know if you can just throw him into what's left of these right. two games or get him ready. Because fast you have enough. to be careful, Skip. Because remember, they threw Pat Bev in, and Pat Bev got a soft tissue injury. Yep. So that's what you have to be. And and Trez is like that. Trez is an energy guy. He's got a guy that's going to give you second chance points. He's going to give you second chance points in the paint. He's going to grab a rebound and have some, kick it to somebody in the corner for a wide open three. Trez Harrell gets the 50-50 balls. He gets 85, 90 percent of those because he's all mm-hmm. hustle. All the time. He can protect the rim. He's not that big, but he'll challenge you at the rim. He's not going to give you anything easy and cheap. 6'7". He's listed <laughs> yeah. at 240. He might be 250 right now. I yeah. don't know. So, uh, I, I, I mean, I love everything about his game. Yep. But to, to think that he's going to be coming in because he's what, what? He's been away three weeks. So, yeah. to think that he can just come in and just like, you have to be careful. That's what you have to be careful of, Skip. A guy trying to play his way in, yep. going an extra minute, like, okay, I'll leave him out there a little longer. And next thing you know, he tweaks something. So the Lakers aren't sure who they are, and the Clippers aren't sure how they're going to come back together, how quickly. So here we go. Well, the Clippers know who they are. The Clippers know know they're starting. They know their starting five. They know their next five. Lou Will's coming. Trez is coming. Uh, Trez is going to play more minutes than Zubats. Although Zubats has been playing, he's been playing out of his mind. He's 11 11 right now, Skip. He's challenging people. Mm -hmm. But your guy hadn't been doing too much. Who? Joe Kim. Oh, Joe Kim. I thought you meant Kawhi. <laughs> nah. Because all Kawhi did was score 39 the other now, look, night. What would I do? 39 and what? Huh? 39 and L. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he got. 39 and L, Jenny. Brought him from 21 down to even. Brought him where? Woo! Brought him where? Woo! That's what's called a moral victory. You get a, a dub, you know, kind of a asterisk dub. So let me ask you a question. If I get on a flight from Atlanta and I say, okay, mm-hmm. I'm on this, ooh, I'm going to San Francisco. Here I come, baby. Yeah. And the plane lands in L.A. What the hell have I done? You're lucky. Yeah, yeah, you got me close. Yeah. So you went I, to the right place. I, no, I didn't. Yep. I, don't know, I bought this flight to go to San Francisco. Oh. Don't drop me off in L.A. and say, I got you close. Uh. 39 with an L, what you need? L.A. is home. No, yeah. <laughs> no mercy. Damian Lillard responded to Skip on Twitter yesterday after Skip tweeted that he wasn't buying Dame Time as a superstar. Then 
We also discussed that idea on the show yesterday. Lillard replied saying, quote, I have never been buying nothing about you, fam. You a joke. And after our private combo full of backpedaling, you will never have my respect. Skip, please tell us, explain what happened between you two. Okay, Shannon Sharp, this is going to take a few minutes because a lot has transpired between me and Damian Lillard okay. that I would like to detail for you right now. Okay. You feel free to chime in anytime that you like. This all started on the morning of May 27th when we were doing a show from home. We okay. were still stuck at home. Right. And Damian had made some statements to our man Chris Haynes of Yahoo Sports uh, that really hit me the wrong way mm -hmm. and offended me. And as I recall, I think you were equally offended by those comments. Right. Because Damian had said he would go to the bubble but unless the NBA could devise a format that would give them a chance to make the playoffs, he was going to sit on the bench and watch these bubble games if he didn't have a chance yes. to, to actually make the playoffs. Correct. I remember. And I was offended because his team was 29 and 37 at right. that point. We were in the middle of a pandemic. And everyone in the sports business, including us sitting right here at this desk, and we were stuck at home at that point. Mm -hmm. We were all depending on the NBA to go to the bubble and try to save sports for us by showing us how they could bring sports back safely. Right. And by the way, they have achieved that. Right. And I think Damien is probably very happy that he went to the bubble and now has a chance to make the playoffs. Right. But the point is that this also occurred to me as I spoke to you through my little camera in my little house up in my loft mm -hmm. to you up in your palatial <laughs> estate up in Bel Air. Damian Lillard has often spoken out like he's one of the leaders of the NBA. Mm -hmm. He sometimes speaks as if he's LeBron James. And LeBron is obviously the face of this league and has earned the right to be the face of this league. Right. And so I wondered out loud on TV to you, what exactly has Damian Lillard ever won to achieve this kind of stature in this league. Because seriously, he's won nothing. Right. He's a very good player, mm -hmm. obviously. Highest he ever finished in the MVP race was fourth in 2018. Mm -hmm. Not bad, not all time great, obviously. So he has won what? Well, LeBron's won three rings with three finals MVPs. And Kevin Durant has won two rings with two finals MVPs. But the last I checked, I don't know what Damian has won. And again, I was worked up and angry because our very lives were depending, our, our existence here on TV was de dependent upon them going to the bubble. Well, Skip, I think I was disappointed because I voiced criticism also. I was like, well, you had an opportunity to put yourself in a better position. Now, the NBA says you're going to go down there and play eight games. Win your games. Hopefully, mm -hmm. you're going to get an opportunity to play Memphis. You yeah. can catch them. Mm -hmm. But to say you need to come up with a plan so we can get in... No, that's not how the NBA should be nope. the divide. Okay. So I, I had I voiced criticism as well as you. Okay. So that afternoon, I heard from two of my friends in this business, our man Chris Haynes yeah. and Stephen A. Smith, both said, hey, Dame's looking for your number. Can we give it to him? Right. Absolutely give right. it to him. And within a few minutes, I get a scathing text from Damian Lillard saying, what have you done to challenge what I have done? Well, let's talk about that. Okay. And I don't want to text talk about it. I want to talk talk about it. And if I could talk face to face, I would have done that at that moment. Right. Within five seconds of me reading that text, I just hit the little dial sign yeah. on, and, and it called. rang his phone. So I called him because I don't run from any of that. Right. And you know my background. I've had dozens, if not hundreds of battles with professional athletes mm -hmm. in my many years in this business. Okay. And it's best if they want to talk about it. Yep, absolutely, let's talk about right. it. It's even better if he wants to come and sit right here, and I'm going to get to that in a few minutes, sure. and we can talk it out live on TV about all his issues that he has with me. So I called him, and right off the top, I tried to be civil with him, right. though he was clearly pretty agitated right. and angry with yeah. me. Yeah. But the first thing I explained to him was, yeah, I got really worked up. I was scathing in my commentary to you, because 
we were in the middle of a pandemic, and I was starting to wonder if we were even going to be able to have this network sustain itself into the fall because I wasn't sure right. we were going to have pro football, college, we're still up in the air about college, college football. football. Correct. I didn't know about baseball, and I was still dubious and highly doubtful about basketball in the bubble right. with the NBA. Right. So I told him, yeah, I got over-emotional. Now he's saying I backtrack, but that wasn't the guts of our conversation because I doubled down on the, the sort of basis of my commentary. What have you done to be that kind of spokesman for the league? And he said, well, I, since I came into the league, I've been one of the clutchest players in the league, blah, blah, blah. We'd go back and forth on and on, and I hung right in there with him, and it started to get heated. And I asked him, what happened? You had your biggest moment of your career last year, conference finals versus Golden State. No, Kevin Durant. It was basically you and CJ versus Steph and Clay. It boiled down to that. You had four cracks at them, four straight games in which you had a chance to win going to the fourth quarter. And just to reiterate for those who might have missed this, the Portland Trailblazers go into those fourth quarters. They were down six. They were tied. They were down three, and the fourth one, they were up eight. That game ended up going to overtime. In those fourth quarters, plus that one overtime, Damian Lillard went eight of 26. That's 31% from mm -hmm. the field. And he shot five of 17 from the three-point line. That's 29%. He was a minus 30 for those fourth quarters and that one overtime. He was not clutch. And by the way, for those who don't know this, since Damian Lillard entered this league, he has the worst postseason winning percentage in all of the NBA. That is 37%. That's he's 19 and 32 in his games. Is that his all his fault? Absolutely not. But is he a transcendent king of the NBA kind of player? I'm sorry, I haven't seen it yet. So I kept telling him on the phone, you just need to show me. You can shut me up by, by doing it. I can't stop you. I can't go out and guard you. I wouldn't even try to guard you. But you can stop me. You, you can silence me by just doing it. When you get chances in these big games, just go do it, mm -hmm. right? right? And by the way, his postseason plus minus, since he entered the league, he is the second worst in the NBA at minus 219. So, so don't tell me you're all-time clutch, even though you've made a lot of big shots in some moments, but not the biggest moments. So we go back and forth about that. And the conversation did not end well. It was cold, and it ended, and I thought that would be the end of it. But it wasn't going to change anything I was going to say on television about Damian Lillard because you know me. I don't pull any punches. Right. Apparently, he got the feeling that because we talked on the phone, that meant I wouldn't criticize him anymore because he had sort of stooped to give me a few minutes. We, we actually talked for about an hour on the phone, Okay. And like he had bought some insurance with me, but you know how I, I, I just react to what I see. Right. So if you go to the bubble and you play a game against Boston early in the seed games mm -hmm. and you're up one with two minutes left and you disappear down the stretch and you're unclutched, I'm going to talk about it. And obviously I'm about to get to the Clipper game. If you miss two big free throws and miss a big tying three, yeah, I'm going to talk about it because I need to see more of you because you clearly of the potential eight seeds, is it fair to say they have on paper by far the biggest threat to the Lakers, the, but, the best? But they're still an eight seed. Okay. So they're still at a decided okay. disadvantage. Okay, I got it. So he also says now that he asked me during this conversation, as he calls it, the private convo that now he made very public, which is fine with me. I don't care about that. Okay. But he asked me, why are you always hating on Braun? I, I got to tell you, I, I have a pretty good memory. I, I don't remember him asking me one thing about LeBron James during that conversation. We did not discuss LeBron to my memory. Maybe I blanked it out, but I don't think so. I don't think we talked at all about LeBron James, which brings me back to last Saturday. The missed free throws, the missed three, and I tweeted j just as the game ended. I continue to ask, is Dame really that guy, cap T, cap G, that guy? a true superstar, all caps, S-U-P-E-R, super, and then lowercase, star. And about 15 minutes passed, and Shannon, I believe he still had to be in the locker room. I don't know if he'd done his post-game media session or not, mm -hmm. but I got a scathing text from Damien saying, 
you might be the most phony MF on TV. Okay, and I'm thinking, I'm phony how? And I wrote him back a longer text explaining what I just said. And I said, no, I'm the most honest and objective. But I think he's calling me phony because he thought we had a quote unquote sort of an unwritten deal mm -hmm. where we talked on the phone so I would stop criticizing him. So that makes me a phony. No, that's not how I play this game. I will call them as I see them. I just say what I see. And obviously, that was a huge game for the Trailblazers, maybe to even get to the pure eight seed where, where they're going to have a play-in with the ninth. And now if you just get to nine, you have to beat the eight seed if it ends up being Memphis. Right. You have to beat them twice to get in the tournament. Well, I mean, that should be a problem, is it? I mean, because everybody, uh, there's a lot of people expecting them to beat the Lakers. Well, if okay. you can't beat the Grizzlies twice, how the hell are you going to beat the Lakers four times? Yep. Okay. So... I, I wrote him this long text back, very objectively. I'll, I'll take phony MF. I'll, I'll swallow that. And he writes back that I'm a bozo. He used the word, I'm a bozo. And he said, lose my damn number. Uh, Dame, I didn't ask for your damn number. I had not, over the two months I had your number, used it one time. Right. I guess he wanted me to sort of text with him, you know, after a good game, right. way to go. You right. know, what's going on down there? Tell me about what's going on with... Is Nurk back or that, that sort Man, of thing? I don't think that man was okay. asking that, Skip. I, he, I don't know. He wanted, to, he wanted to clear the air, Skip. Let me, let me take it from an uh, athlete's perspective because I've been an athlete and I've been on, uh, the, uh, on that side and now I'm on this side where you stand. I think the problem that some of the athletes have, Skip, is that when they do something well, you never give it the weight that you mm -hmm. give when they do something wrong. Okay. See, like, when he hit that shot against OKC, when he hit that shot against Houston, when he sent Memphis home, you don't give that the credibility like you gave his failures. And so guys are saying, well, hold on. When I did something good, you didn't say, oh, man, look at Dame. Dame was all-time clutch. Dame was all-time clutch. You didn't do that. And so guys... I, I think I was highly complimentary right. of that shot. I'm, I'm just and saying... And I think I was critical of Russell for getting outplayed yeah. nose-to-nose right. against and, Damian. And I just think the thing is that when players, players like, okay, look, none of us really like to be criticized. They're like, okay, I know that comes with the territory. Stop. Nobody likes to be criticized. We all like to, like to have praise mm -hmm. heaped upon us. Yep. But the really good ones can understand that's a part of the game, and you deal with it. I just think the thing is, Skip, is that for, 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 for an athlete, and you are, I mean, sometimes I, I, I think... Me knowing you, had I not know, known you uh, um, like I know you over the last four years, September 6th, we would have been, wor we worked together for four years. And from a distance, and that's the thing that I get, man, is Skip really like that? I'm like, yes, Skip is really like that. What you see is what you get. He is honest. He's loving. That There's nothing bad I can say about Skip. But I think sometimes people think that you take personal shots at the athletes. I think that's the biggest thing. Mm. And I think the athletes themselves think you take personal shots mm -hmm. at them because you're so harsh in your critique of them, especially when things are not going their way. Have it, I taken any personal shots at Damien? No, no, no. I'm, not, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm saying how, yeah. for, how they perceive it. Okay. I don't believe it's personal. No, I don't. But I, just, I, do, I do think you've been, you, you can be overly critical at times while not giving them the same amount of praise. Mm -hmm. And then they look at it and say, well, hold on, you hype this guy. It's kind of like when Tom Brady, Tom Brady makes a mistake. It's like, see, it's everybody else's fault. But when he plays well, everybody else doesn't get any credit. Mm. Dame, for me, Dame is clutch. And I can't say because he didn't come through in that moment, now all the clutchness that he's done goes away. Mm -hmm. um, but Dame felt the way he felt. Um, but like I said, I was as critical of him originally on May 27th as you were. Because I was like, hold on, bro. Mm -hmm. You don't get to determine yep. how to set up so you can get into the tournament. Okay. Just go down there, play your eight games, take care of your business, let the chips fall where they may. Okay. But to say, well, I don't have a realistic chance, I'm not going to play, bro, you making two, a quarter of a bill. Mm. Yep. So, leading into yesterday's show, I tweeted just to sort of tease our A block right. show. <clears throat> I'm still not buying Dame time. And apparently the Clippers aren't either. And during the show, I made the point to you that Pat Bev, Paul George, had basically clowned Damian Lillard at the end of that game, pointing to their imaginary watch. Yeah. Is it Dame time and waving goodbye to right. him as he waved goodbye to the Thunder and Russell right. Westbrook a year ago mm -hmm. in the first round of the playoffs? And my point to you was they would not have done that 
to LeBron James. They would not have done that to Kevin Durant. They would have paid both those men far more respect because they have earned that respect. And I thought it validated in part what I'm saying about Damian because they know he's won nothing. So they've both been around. And I'm not saying they're better players because they're not better players, although you can make a case Paul George is right in the same ballpark with Damian Lillard. But they went out of their way to challenge him on social media and go back and forth after the game. I thought that was telling and significant. For me, Skip, Kevin Durant does not have a – he doesn't have something that he does after he hits a big shot that he does like Dame, mm -hmm. like his dollar time, mm -hmm. like his Dame time. Yep. Skip, I think the thing is we, we have to look at. Pat Bev is in L.A. Why? Because Paul George uh, – because uh, Dame sent mm -hmm. his butt packing in Houston. Paul George is in L.A. for one reason. Because well, I mean, that's not why Pat Bev's in L.A. No, he didn't. He didn't send no, no. Butt pack. I he mean, said, he, when he, he, he knocked him out of the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Paul George. Okay. Paul George with Russell Westbrook yeah. got sent home packing, mm -hmm. and he came to the realization, I can't get any further than what I'm going right now because Dame sent his butt home packing. Mm -hmm. And then he up there key, 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 and laughing after the dude just hit a 50-footer on you to drop a 50-piece mm -hmm. and average 33? Mm -hmm. So Dame is like, hold on, bro. Did mm -hmm. you just forget what I did to you okay. last year? Now you go get Kawhi. And now all of a sudden your chest is out. Okay. So, Damien, after that tweet from me, he fired back at me on Twitter calling me a joke. And he wrote on Twitter, after our private convo, full of backpedaling. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was private. Okay. You divulged it. Oh, no, I didn't divulge it. He <laughs> divulged it. Uh, you still have uh, no respect for me was the basic right. point. I said, okay, so be it. So, Damien told me he does not watch Undisputed, yet... He has now called me phony and bozo and joke. And I'm wondering, what does it matter what I call him? If he has no respect for me, <laughs> wh why would he even pay attention to me? That's the biggest question I have. And I always have that for the athletes. What does it matter what I say? Because they take it very seriously. They do. Because I think he still has enough respect for my opinion because I've been doing this for a long time. I go back to covering the Lakers of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar pre-magic yeah. here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So I have a pretty good grip on what's going on. Right. But I don't mind the name calling of me because I'm not going to name call back, but I will criticize when I see a, a time and a place for criticism. Right. When it's called for, I'm going to criticize, which leads me to the end of this, which is I did use Dame's number one last time last night after I saw this tweet. One last time, won't use it again, but I invited him onto this show to sit right here, as many athletes have, right. Terrell Owens, on down, mm -hmm. and we can go back and forth about everything you and I just talked about. Right. And you can chime in and you can take his side, mm -hmm. you can take my, I, I don't care, because we can have it out, what got said and what didn't get said nah. in the private convo. I, Skip, I don't know if he'll take you up on that, but in a situation like this, I'm not taking sides. I'm going to be objective. I'm going to say if Dame is wrong, I'm going to say Dame is wrong. If you're wrong in a situation, I'm going to say you is wrong. You're wrong in that situation. Because what I've always tried to be since I've taken this job, being an athlete, mm -hmm. realizing I got had a mom that when I played and a sister and got kids and got a brother and uh, had a significant other at the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, I'm very uh, cognizant of that, Skip. And so for me, I'm going to be firm. I mm -hmm. think the greatest thing that when an athlete sees me, they say, man, you be telling the truth. He say, you, you firm, but you fair. And I've talked to a lot of guys that say you fun. And Skip, sometimes I, I, I take serious situations and I can make them funny. I, God has given me that ability to sometimes take serious situations and mm -hmm. make them funny. But people get the the, uh, uh, the, the gist of what I'm saying, mm -hmm. the crooks of what I'm saying. And for me, that's what that's what I'm going to stand on. I'm not going to take, if, if, if I didn't think Dame was top 10, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm not going to say Dame is top 10 if I don't believe he's top 10. I'm not going to say Luca's good if I don't mm -hmm. think Luca's good. Because that ain't how we do it. Because you have no, for the most part, you have no idea mm -hmm. where I'm going. And people are like, well, what are you? In, I say, Skip and I don't rehearse nothing. Nothing. The first time, we, the, Skip and I bar barely talk. We talk even less now because we come because of, of the situation. Yep. Is that basically I show up, camera go on, and away we go. Yep. So Skip has no idea what I'm going to say. I have no idea what he's going to say. We're just reacting to mm -hmm. what each other say. So if you think this is scripted, this is not scripted. Yep. What you see is what you get with he and I. So I, I don't really know what to tell Dame. I, I just I can just tell Dame it's not personal with you. Uh, 
I do think sometimes you're overly harsh in your criticism, but that's the way you do. I mean, sometimes you might think, I'm going too easy on a guy. Or you're overly harsh in your criticism of Tom Brady. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You go. See, I told well, you. Did I tell y'all people what are you going to mm, go back to? Oh, mm, Tom Brady? Mm. Tom Brady? Or Michael Jordan. How about that one? Oh, my goodness. Extreme excessive criticism of a guy who's beyond criticism. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 mm -hmm. no, no. No one is beyond mm. reproach. Not in my book. So in the end, this is my two cents from a distance about how Dame is attacking me. It's classic, cliched kill the messenger right. or discredit the messenger. If if you can't defend yourself on my criticism, you finally say, yeah, but you're a joke, you're a bozo, you're a phony. Right. And maybe his followers will say, yeah, we won't pay any attention to that anymore. You're okay, Dame. And that's fine with me if that's how you have to play this game, but I don't play it that but way. But Skip, we gotta be careful because what has transpired because when we say guys haven't won anything, we got guys that are the third or the fourth or the fifth option on a mm -hmm. team that's won a championship that believe they're better than superstars that have never won a championship. Mm -hmm. We got guys that have titles that somehow believe because they're better than Charles Barkley because he never won, or mm -hmm. they're better than Mailman because he never won. And I'm like, okay. hold on. So that we got to be careful of that. Just because a guy hasn't won anything, and he might not win anything, mm -hmm. but that doesn't devalue him as a, uh, as a great player. Mm -hmm. And I believe Dame is a great player, although he hasn't won. Skip, there are very few people that get it like Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan comes, in, comes out of college, and he wins right away. And he keeps on winning. That doesn't normally happen. You look at Jordan, mm -hmm. how long it took Jordan before he won. Look how long it took LeBron before he won. Look how long it took Kevin Durant. Oh, you get a Magic Johnson mm -hmm. with an NCAA title. In his rookie year, he wins a title and win finals MVP. Mm -hmm. Larry Bird, it was two years later, he wins. Skip, it doesn't happen like that. We've gotten so used to instant gratification. Mm -hmm. And we think if, he, if a player is great, well, if you're great, just win. It doesn't work like that. Unless you're transcendent, you're that guy who can lift even the Portland Trailblazers up to glory. They had a real shot against Golden State last year. But Skip, that, that was his moment. And he shrank in that Skip, moment. you have to understand, Golden State playing without Kevin Durant is different than Golden State playing without Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. Because they had played without Kevin Durant for so long. So Kevin Durant not being there, guess what? They go back to their 73 and 9 team. They go back to their 67 and 15 team. So it, they, they have played. They had won championships without Kevin Durant. Mm. It's not like a situation where a guy has been there, then all of a sudden you take him out of the lineup. They have been used to playing without Kevin Durant. Hmm. I thought, yes, could Dame, does Dame wish he had played better down the stretch? Absolutely. But I'm not so sure that even in those games, with a chance to win, had Dame not been spectacular early on. He's still, he's special, Skip. Four quarters. He, he's special. Yeah. He's special. Well, uh, show me and shut me up. And I will be the first to tell you, I'll be rooting for Damian Lillard against your Lakers if, in fact, they make it to the first round. But the thing is, Skip, and I understand, I saw, uh, I heard what you said about his win percentage, but how many times have Dane gone into the playoffs where his team was favored? Okay. So, so he beat go I he can say that about Jordan's early teams also. You know, Jordan was always favorite. Oh, they were not against finals. the Celtics? Are you kidding no, me? No, no, no. Against, against what the happened? Pistons? And guess what happened? Yeah, they and guess what happened? Okay. So, but, but skip, skip. Nobody said Jordan wasn't a great player because he hadn't won anything. Mm. Because for his first seven years, he won jack. Mm. And everybody still said he was still winning MVP. He was still winning Defensive Player of the Year. And he hadn't won jack. And the Celtics called him God in sneakers. It does, but skip. And all. All the NBA players know what Dame represent. Mm. I mean, think about what they're saying about him down in the bubble. Everybody, mm. he, he, he and a, a book mm. and, and been some of the biggest names down there. Like, oh, Skip, they know what that guy represents. Skip, you mm. know, you know what it is. Uh, the Clippers apparently don't know what he represents. They know what he, they know what he represents. Do they? Yeah. Boy, they didn't yeah. uh, express it. Oh, they keep kidding. They, after the game, they didn't say, gee, we were just kidding around. We have no. nothing but respect for him. Nope, they went right on social media and blasted away. Skip, you know that's how it that, is. You know and I know. You know what players think. You know how it operates where players aren't going to attack like that if they have the utmost respect for somebody who is a made man in your league. Oh, no, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I don't care how made you are. Mm -hmm. I'm going I'm to do it. If I'd have been an NBA player back in the day mm -hmm. and I get me a dunk, guess what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Right on the bull, yeah. I'm like, ah, I'm like, yeah. And you'd take yeah. a big old L. You would have then taken it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 that's what I'm doing. Yeah, he yeah. would have gone for 70. If I, if, I, if, I, if I play in Kobe, I'm going to put yep. my...
Mm. I'll put my jersey in my everything. I'm mimicking so, everybody. Bottom line to this discussion, I have not heard back from Damian Lillard. Uh, I hope to, but I doubt I will. Damn, you steal my dog. Mm. Don't drop no diss track about your boy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't need any uh, of that. Get that would him. be fine, too. Oh, I appreciate Get the openness, Skip, from you and explaining <laughs> that full story because there was a lot there. Good stuff from you guys. And I do hope Dame reaches out. It's always good to do things in person, so we'll have to see on that. No mercy. How about this, guys? Tomorrow, Super Bowl MVP Patrick Mahomes will join us live to talk everything from his Super Bowl win to the upcoming season and his historic 10-year extension. You won't want to miss it. Patrick Mahomes tomorrow on Undisputed. Oh, cannot wait for that. Support for a college football season to still happen has been gaining steam in recent days. Dozens of star players issued a joint statement expressing their interest to play. And now Big Ten coaches, Chip Harbaugh, Ryan Day, Scott Frost, are all advocating to play, with Frost even saying he'd be willing to play outside of the conference if they decide to not have a season. But guys, I've been following this closely, seeing so many coaches voice their opinion. Shannon, I want yours. Should they play? Skip for me. And I'm looking at it from a player's perspective. I want assurances that if I get this, the long-term effects, I'm going to be taken care of. Simple as that. Skip, there's a reason why the administrators don't want to sign off on this. Mm -hmm. If everything was okay, they'd like, sure, go ahead. If they weren't worried about a problem, but they know there's something going on here. Mm -hmm. And they know that there have been several players that have tested, that have had complications and had lingering heart problems from this disease. Mm -hmm. Now, what's also puzzling to me, Skip, I just read yesterday, Kelly Leffler. We were just talking about her last week, the Atlanta Dream owner. She had a nice little statement. I athletes should be heard. Now you want to hear the athletes, Kip. Mm. You know this. We don't went from shut up and dribble to stick to sports to just play football to now you want to hear their voices. Yep. My grandpa used to say, boy, people don't always need you, but they'll damn sure use you anyway. Mm -hmm. So what I'm starting to see, Skip, you will use me. If it's for your benefit, mm. if you don't, if you don't want to, if you don't, if I can't benefit you, you don't want to hear what I got to say. Mm. Skip, I need assurances because if I'm a player, I be damn if I'm gonna stick Mary Porter with some bills. Unless you know what it's like, Skip, to have a toothache and can't go get it fixed. Mm -hmm. Unless you get a gash that you can't go to the emergency room and get repaired. Mm -hmm. Unless you know what that's like. Don't tell me get out there and play. It'll be okay. You young, you'll overcome it. No, no, no. I need assurances. So I just need to know in a couple other things, Skip. Are uh, the college campuses going to be open? Are we going to allow 70, are we going to allow 50, 60,000 people to come back here? Uh, so are the players going to be in a bubble like they are in Orlando? So are you going to seclude the players? Y'all ain't going to class. Y'all going to have virtual classes in your dorm room. You going to practice, to play, to your dorm room. Is that how we going to do it, Skip? Mm. Because if they come in contact, because guess what those other students going to be doing? Going and coming. Party it and party. Mm -hmm. You go to college, you ain't going to see in your room. I was one of the few that did spend a lot of time in this room. But most times, Skip, you see what they're doing now, Skip, they're partying now. Mm -hmm. In the, the middle of the pandemic, they got five and a thousand uh, 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 guest parties going on. The governor of California uh, uh, threatened to cut the power. Yep. So, Skip, I need some assurances. Skip, Fox, Big Ten, is, is we, cover the, we cover that. Mm -hmm. That's us. We need that. We need it. But Skip, these kids, Skip, these kids don't get paid. So and now, not only you want me to go out there and you ain't going to give me nothing but a scholarship, mm -hmm. you want me to risk my long-term help. Yep. Give me some assurances that if I, could, if I contract this virus mm -hmm. and the long-term effect, you're going to be culpable because, Skip, the kid, of course the kids want to play. But guess what, Skip? Those guys, they got all those concussions. They went back out there. What did they want to do, Skip? They wanted to play even though they were getting paid. Mm -hmm. And then here comes that big billion-dollar settlement that came down the pipeline concussion, yep. mm -hmm. and the NFL changed the way they think it. They mm -hmm. thought. Yep. College football, those administrators, skip, skip, Nick Saban and Scott Frost and Jim Harbaugh, they're not going to be on the hook for those billions. Those universities are. Mm -hmm. So tread carefully. Make sure you make a sound decision. Don't do it. Well, we got to have football. Okay. Mm. Tread carefully. Okay. I hear everything you just said. I'm first going to personalize this, and I'm going to give you my mindset, and you can share yours on, on the same sort of plane that we're talking about. Do you want to play football? Yes. And about two months ago, we decided, let's go into the studio. Let's mm -hmm. do our show right here. Right. And we got about six feet between us. Yep. It's 
close mm -hmm. and we warn each other, kind of sit back while the other's talking, talking because correct. sometimes there's a little spittle that <laughs> flies out of your mouth. Especially I know you I get do. Excited, yes. Yep. And it was risky for us to come in here, even though the safety protocols in here are extreme and and sensational. Right. We are obviously our temperature is taken at the gate. We are quizzed every day. Have you had any interaction with yep. anybody? You have to answer five or six questions. Yep. No, 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 before you're allowed in the gate. Right. We have Purell stations about every 15 feet in the hall, and I stop at every one of them. <laughs> but it was risky coming in here, mm -hmm. but we decided, hey, we just want to play. Right. Right? right. We're, we're willing to do this. Right. And I'm going to knock on wood right now that we've gotten this far because I don't know whom to trust here. I, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure you go home after the show. We're guy. Uh, yep. That's it. That's it. That's what I do. I go back to my bubble with Ernestine, and it's just Ernestine and Hazel and I in our bubble, mm -hmm. and we just do, don't go out. We haven't right. gone to a restaurant, even outdoors. She does some occasional shopping. Yes. But it, it's very severe protocol in my bubble. So I trust me and I trust Shannon, but I don't know if I can trust anybody I pass in right. the hallway. So we always, I, I just hug the wall. You actually see somebody in the hallway? Another occasional, it's a ghost town. <laughs> Antiseptic ghost town. But the mindset was, we just want to play right. and we're willing to take some risk right. with no assurances that we're going to go in and try to pull off this show. And we've been doing it now for about two months. I think we were one of the first to come into here at right. FS1 mm -hmm. to get back to the studio. Okay, so that's my mindset. That's your mindset. But right now, college football is adrift because it has no unified leadership. Right. There's no Adam Silver. There's no Roger Goodell. Right. I, Give your head for months. Yep. I, I, you are reacting instead of proacting. Correct. Obviously, the NFL, especially let's start with the NBA, they were way ahead of this curve. Mm -hmm. And what Adam Silver is pulling off in the bubble is, is just all-time, all-time great because so far, so great, right? right? They've had no positive tests in the last, uh, we're going like two, on a month. Two or three weeks, yeah. Right? Three yeah. weeks, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. So way to go, Adam Silver. I believe Roger Goodell's going to do the best he can with no bubble because right. you're only going to be as strong as your weakest link on the team. Correct. If the weakest link goes out and parties and comes in and infects everyone, you, you can't stop that. Right. It's hard to control that. But you, you can control how you, you handle yourself. Mm -hmm. Will you keep sanitizing? Will you keep washing? Will right. you not touch your face? Will you keep your mask on at all times right. except when you have to play? Now, obviously, in here, we don't run into each other. We don't sweat on each other. No. We hope not. And that's going to be what college and pro football are about to be up against. Can, can you get away with that? So now we see Tom Brady trying to wear the shield and all the NFL players are going to have to try to. I know you never liked it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's harder to breathe, especially guys, especially for you know, you know, uh, some quarterbacks. Skip like the mobile quarterbacks. They wear the shield. Yeah. I mean, you look at our, from RG three sure. to Vic and all yeah. those guys. But more, normally, the other quarterbacks didn't wear the shield. No, and but this shield will go all the all way down, down to your and, neck. And me in a down stance. But yeah. I'm sweating, Skip. Get the sweat going. So you're I got to drip, you know, and you're you're going to fog. Exa exactly. So for me, Skip, here's the thing. A lot of these kids. The insurance that they have is through the institution. Yep. So, you know, I break my leg, the school's going to pay, going, going to pay for it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's something, I get an infection, the school's going to take care of that. Well, if I get a long-term and I get no medical, because I can assure you some of these kids' family come from families, they don't have health insurance. Yep. So then what? Okay. Who, who gets, who, so, so what do I do now, Skip? Now, I went out there and played. Everybody cheer, yeah, let's go Bama, let's go Clemson, Ooh, Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm laid up in a hospital bed. Okay. Now, my grandma, or my grandma, uh, uh, my mom, or somebody is mm -hmm. trying to figure out a way well, how in the hell are we going to pay these bills. Yep. What, 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 what's going on now, Skip? Mm. What do I do now? What, what, what is Ohio State? What is all these schools that want to play? What are they going to do then? Mm. Uh, it's up to each individual school. It's up to each individual conference. And that's why it is chaos right now exactly. because they're all independent entities. And now we have Nebraska saying, Okay, hell with the Big Ten. We'll just go play whoever will play us, right? Yeah. Maybe they'll have a winning record. I don't know. Scott <laughs> but the point is, 
This is threatening the very financial structure that college football has lived on for mm -hmm. low these centuries, right. right? Yes. Because they are running scared, that each conference is running scared of liability. Right. How do we pay, what, what insurance can we provide? And now they're running scared because the players are uniting, they're organizing, and they're, it feels like they're about to unionize, which they are trying to head off at the pass. And that's one big reason I told you yesterday they, they want to derail the potential union by postponing until the spring because, as you pointed out, a lot of these stars who are unionizing, uh -huh. they're going to be in the draft. Right. So they won't be, they right. won't even care about playing football right. in the springtime. Skip, and you and I, when we made the decision come back, you and I were, played we were paid employees. You and I mm -hmm. have medical benefits. Yep. There's a reason why these colleges made the kids sign a waiver to come work out. Why you got to sign a waiver? If everything's okay, if this is a hoax, if this is all this is a ploy to, to try to get uh, uh, President Trump out of office, why we got to sign a waiver? What do you sign? What, what they do that at, Skip? Mm. If this isn't real, if this is a hoax, if there's no, oh, it's the common flu, you know, I ain't never had to sign a waiver for a flu. You? Mm. When, when, the kid, when they started signing waiver for flus? Yep. So that lets you know the gravity, the severity of this. They need to take it serious. But I, you have, I, I college, you have four months. Skip, yep. you have four months. To come up with a plan, because mm -hmm. this happened in, in March. Okay, you're going to play in September, and now here we are. What? So what's the protocol? What, mm -hmm. what, what's going on? Kids about to start to come back to school. You're going to have 50,000 kids on campus. You don't think those football players are going to interact with those kids, Skip? That's the whole party going to college. They yep. get the college experience, not to just play a sport. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence made the, the case yesterday. He thinks they'll be safer playing football than not playing football. Left to their own devices, if they just go back to their friends, family, yeah. that he's making the case you'll be more likely to get infected that direction than staying with your teammates for most of the. I guarantee you, those kids don't know 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. They're going to be able to come in contact with 20,000, 40, 50, 60,000 people a day. Where can they go and come in contact with that many people? Unless they understand the rules and they just go back to their room after practice. Well, will they? Skip, you're talking about 19 okay. to 20 year old. Okay. Well, this is, I'm also talking about life and I, death. Skip. Okay. You know how this works. Mm -hmm. You don't think it's going to happen to mm -hmm. you. Nobody thinks the worst case scenario could possibly happen I, I to them. I think we're getting past hoaxes and, and best case scenarios. I think we're the worst case now. Oh, I, I've been, yeah. I've taken, I'm going to err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. I'll take it serious. And if it's not all well, I got a mask on my face. <laughs> I'm a pretend doctor. Yep. In worst case scenario, I'm a pretend doctor, Skip. Okay. Other than that, what have I lost? <sighs> you could have had football mm -hmm. yep. if you just wore a mask. Yep, could have. It does feel rushed. You guys brought up that point. And I couldn't get off social media yesterday seeing all of the college you know, coaches and athletes and voicing their opinion. But right now, I feel for the athletes because they're hurt either way. If they don't play, they're affected. If we don't know the long-term effects of this, it's just it, it's a lose-lose right now. And I don't have a solution, and it's frustrating. And now we have to sit and wait along with everyone else for a plan. So we'll keep waiting for those decisions to be made. I want to transition now to our hot topic of the day, sponsored by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. According to ESPN's Bill Barnwell, the Cowboys are primed to have a bounce back season in 2020. Last season, Dallas was 0-5 in games decided by seven or fewer points. The Cowboys were also the only team to post more than 100 points in scoring differential, but failed to make the playoffs or have a winning record last season. Barnwell said, with better luck, Dallas is projected to be one of the best teams in the NFL this season. And mm. yeah, I said that correctly, mm. Shannon. Do you agree? Look. Hmm. Yeah, I ain't never heard. I ain't never heard a coach. I never heard a coach get in there in front, of, in front of a team meeting and say, "You know what, guys? If we play hard and with a little luck, hmm. I mean, the man he, he prefaced it with a little luck. Well, injury luck. Oh, that is okay. something. Was they injury last year? Hmm. They had a few. They had nothing. No, they don't do that. It's not your turn to speak. Hmm. I don't even know why you're talking to me. They should improve. You know why they should improve, Skip? Hmm. Because they vastly underachieved last year. This is the problem that I have with your Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Your mediocre middle-of-the-road mm -hmm. Cowboys, is that you blamed everything on Jason Garrett. When they got out to that hot, hot start, mm -hmm. they won those three games in spite of Jason. Mm -hmm. They lose. He's a terrible coach. He couldn't motivate his way. Oh, what, what was your favorite one? He couldn't road, He couldn't motivate a bull out of... In a rodeo shoot. Yeah! He couldn't. I say, for real? If you can't motivate a bull in a shoot, you got a problem. Skip, 
So the Cowboys should be the most improved. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question, Skip. Let's just say for the sake of argument, I failed a fourth grade. And the teacher comes around and tells my mom, say, you know what? This year, he should pass. He should improve. He should have improved last year. He should have passed it last year. Mm. Your team, look at your team, Skip. All those pro bowlers, Zeke Elliott, your offensive line, Amari Cooper, mm. Gallup over 1,100 yards. Mm. Your slot receiver had over 800 yards, 8-8. Eight and eight. You know why, Skip? Because this is what people do. Against bad teams, non, the nine non-playoff teams, 125-point differential. Mm. You beat one team that made the playoff. You split with the Eagles. Mm. Let's see who went to the playoff. Green Bay, did y'all beat them? No, you trailed by 24. Mm. What about Buffalo? They went to the playoff. Trail by 19. Trail Chicago by 17. Trail the Jets. The Jets? M-E-S-S. Mm. -S -S. Mess, mess, mess. Trail them by 18. Mm. Minnesota went to the playoffs. Did y'all beat them? The Saints went to the playoffs. Did y'all beat them? So in other words, against teams that you should be, you can't even be a playoff team. Mm. You're loaded up on bad teams that had you and everybody else fooled. Had Jerry talk about, oh, there's a good Italian we better out. You know, Super Bowl team, there's a good a team. Mm. Girl. By the way, where is Jerry Skip? Mm. Now we have skipped that something. I need you to know. You know something. It's been four months mm -hmm. and we ain't heard anything from J E R R A L. That's how you spell it. Mm. Gerald Wayne Jones. Gerald Wayne Jones Jr. He went on extended vacation. Skip. To Bora Bora. He's still there. Y'all should improve. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, look here. This kid that y'all drafted. He better be Randy Moss. Mm. If this dude ain't Randy... Say his name. I ain't saying nothing. C.D. Lamb, <laughs> say it. Skip, I ain't never seen anything like this here. Even Randy didn't get this kind of hype. Mm. Y'all should improve. Mm. Eight and eight, pathetic. Mm. Yet you have been campaigning for my quarterback, Dak Prescott, to get as much money as Patrick Mahomes. 45 million. I didn't million. say that. Yes, you did. I said 40. Mm. Uh, Which... I don't think you believe that for one second. 40. Now, back to the premise. Should they be improved this year? They should be spectacularly improved because they made so many huge, spectacular changes. What? On defense, let's start there. They added Gerald McCoy and Dontari Poe and Ha Ha Clinton Dix and Alden Smith, who could be a beast of a monster of a beast. He just might be everything that we thought he was five, five years, years ago. Uh, according to our man, Jay Glazer, he is in outrageous shape. He is pulling exercise equipment out of the walls at Jay's gym. And once upon a time, he was the fiercest pass rusher in this game. And he is back, and, and I'm knocking on wood for him. He is clean and sober for the first time in a long time and has been for about six, maybe now we're up to about eight months. So I'm going to bet he's going to be a factor. He's going to be a contributor. And then look at what they drafted. Trevon Diggs is an athlete of a ball hawk from Alabama, the school that you love. And they stole him in the second round. And they stole, stole Neville Gallimore in the third round out of Oklahoma. And all every time I turn on my TV, he disrupted offenses. He is hard to block in the interior defensive line. And that Reggie Robinson from Tulsa, I didn't watch him much, but all the game tape, he is a playmaking ball hawk. You're adding ball hawks to a secondary that didn't have one. Byron Jones could tackle and he could cover, but he couldn't. He didn't he, take the ball away. He couldn't pick his own nose, right? <laughs> and, and then that Bradley and Nye from Utah, my God, you look at his game tape, he just flies off the edge and he's going to help the pass rush that wasn't there last year. They added Greg Zerline one of the best, a, a top five kicker, and they had statistically the worst kicker in football last year, Brett the Fret Maher, and I can make a case he cost them at least three of those games last year. Oh, my God. And then do Why I... Why are you even do, in that do, position? Do, do I even need to bring up C.D. Lamb? Oh. I told you going in, I first guessed it. I didn't second guess. I said he's the best receiver in the draft, and he magically, thank you, God, fell all the way to 17 right into Jerry's lap. Judy. Thank you. Nope. C.D. Lamb. Stay and all of a sudden, Dak Prescott has become a very viable top three MVP candidate because of that draft pick. But, Skip, what happens is, is that when people look at you guys as point, point differential and you make some compelling points, C.D. Lamb, you believe they stole him with the 17th pick and you believe they, uh, Trevon Diggs and Gal, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gal, uh, Gal, Gal, Gal Moore, you believe they got all these picks 
in spots that they could have gone even higher. And I get all that. But when you look at the Cowboys last year, Skip, you beat, you blew out really bad teams. Agree. So your point differential looks really good. Okay. So you, when you beat Washington half the depth twice, you beat the Giants twice, and you beat Miami. Yep. So you probably you probably right there. You're probably plus seventy five. Okay, that's five out of eight. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, look, you only won eight games with all that talent you got. You only won eight games. One impressive game against Philly at home on a Sunday night. We did that. Let y'all feel good because okay. we knew y'all gonna be overconfident when y'all came down there. Mm. And look at that, what we did. Yeah, you crushed us seventeen to nine. We're back. We're backups. That's what we did to y'all. We're backups. You crushed us with my quarterback not being able to practice uh, with a banged up shoulder. Look what my guy crushed us seventeen to nine. No Alshon, no D Jack. I mean, we've down to our third and fourth. We took two guys off the practice squad the year uh, mm. early in the year and beat you guys. Ancient history. Your quarterback didn't even make the top 100 voted by players. Hold on. Carson Wentz didn't make it. Oh, so, so, so now there's value to that now. Yeah. Okay. Your guy was 46. So that's got to be worth about, what, 40 mil? From not being on it to 46? Mm. That's got to be worth about 40 mil, right, Skip? Mm. We even have Andy Dalton backing up Dak Prescott in case worst-case scenario happens. The we, we got a guy who in his first five years was one of the winningest quarterbacks this side of Tom Brady. The best addition you guys made mm -hmm. is when hired uh, John Bones Fossil. Mm, that'll work. He's the best. He's one yeah. of the best. He's the best special teams coach okay, I'll in all take of football. That. And he coached one Greg the Leg Zerline. Yes. So now they are reunited. That's going to be magic made. And the biggest move is addition by subtraction. Mr. Mediocre is now coaching the okay. Giants okay. offense. But well, I, but I want to know. Oh, are, eight and eight, Jason. <laughs> Who are you going to blame mm -hmm. when you guys don't win? Because Jason Garrett's gone. That hedge is gone now. That Job hedge, that, that, that comfort zone that you had, because mm -hmm. you could always blame him. And everybody's like, yeah, you know what? He should have went for it on fourth and 46. Mm -hmm. Why not? What do you got to lose in the first quarter? Mm -hmm. You already had that loss. That's how y'all do, Jason. Mm -hmm. He don't go for it on fourth and 30. Oh, you should have went for that, Jason. Mm -hmm. But your day coming. Mike McCarthy won a Super Bowl in Green Bay. I know it was a long oh, time ago, but here we go. We got a made man. Yeah. He's decorated. I want to know who could coach Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers and only get to one Super Bowl. Mm. I want to know the guy that can do that. Yeah. I could get to one. I don't know how Aaron Rodgers hadn't been back to the Super Bowl in 10 years. Because, because he had somebody like holding him back. Really? Is it the guy that you just mentioned his uh, name? Held him back. Really? Yep. Mm. Yep. Well, I guess he'll make amends with my team. No, he won't. Yep. No, he won't. <laughs> that ain't happening. All right. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see about that one. Somehow Aaron Rodgers in the mix. No mercy. LeBron and the Lakers finally snapped their three-game skid with an exciting win over the Nuggets last night. LeBron led the way with 29, but it was Kyle Kuzma who knocked down the game-winning shot with less than a half a second to go. Kuzma finished with 25, and after the game, LeBron said that in order to win a title, Kuzma needs to be their third best player or second best player if he or Anthony Davis are having an off night. Fox Sports NBA analyst Chris Broussard joining us now. Chris, tell me, what was your biggest takeaway from that win last night for the Lakers? Well, first of all, let's put it in perspective. It's not like they were facing the 96 Bulls. All right, Denver. <laughs> sat their starters the entire fourth quarter to rest. And then they were already without Gary Harris and Will Barton, who are two starters who will be back Friday. So just a little perspective. That said, the Lakers did some really good things, starting with Anthony Davis. You guys know I've said repeatedly I need to see him closer to the basket. And that's what he did earlier in the game. His first three or four buckets were at the rim or off post-ups and things like that. And that gets him going that, you know, he sees the ball go into the basket. It puts the defense on notice that, hey, we got to watch this guy inside. And it opens things up outside. So I love seeing AD play at the rim like that. Secondly, he went into the, in the fourth quarter, he did some damage, which, again, I've been calling for. He had seven points in the last five minutes. They're going to need him to have the attitude against the really good teams not just the Denver second and third unit, but again, it's a good sign from him. Then you got Kyle Kuzma. We know we've said LeBron needs a dog with him, and Kuzma has that dog mentality. There's no doubt about it. We've all kind of talked about how he needs to be that third guy in kind of a big three. If LeBron and AD don't have it going one night, he can step up. We know he can score. The question with Kuzma's always been, 
what what's he going to do defensively? And not not just effort, but being locked in, focused, you know, in the right rotations and things like that. And I think he's been good at that in the bubble, and that enables him to stay on the floor late in a game and be an offensive threat. I love, too, you saw that, you know, they kind of chest bump LeBron and Kuzma after the shot. But LeBron's got his hands up in the air before the ball even goes through the rim. Kuzma will see that, and I think that's great. We know there was questions about these two earlier in the season getting along after Kuzma's trainer kind of spoke up. Uh, but this will Kuzma will see this and know that LeBron believes in him, has confidence in him. So I think that's a good team-building aspect as well. So I think overall it was a good night for the Lakers and something they can build on. No, Chris, it was a good night offensively for the Lakers. <laughs> There's no way this game is supposed to be this close Go in the fourth quarter when the Nuggets set their entire starting lineup. So no Jokic, no Murray, no M <clears throat> uh, M uh, MJP. Come on, uh, uh, Chris. I mean, they go eight straight possessions. They shoot 67% with backups against your starters. They shoot, what, uh, they three for three. They're perfectly 100% from the three-point line in the fourth quarter. Yes, it was finally glad. I'm glad to see the Lakers break out of their shooting slump. They shot over 50% from the uh, uh, the floor. They shot uh, 40, uh, what, 50% from the three-point line. Okay, that's good. But you can't give up that kind of points to those guys in that situation. If that's Jokic, if they go the whole way with their starters, okay, I'm like, man, that was a tough one. But you can't play, you can't play this game that close with backups. Uh, I like what I saw with AD, even though he did not get a whole lot of shot attempts. He was able to get to the foul line 10 times in the second half. That's what you and I talked about because we thought he had started to settle. He saw, he saw the success that he had in the, couple, the first three games shooting the ball from the outside. He's like, well, hey, I'm Dirk Nowitzki. I'm Kevin Durant. I'm just going to hang around out here. No, put the ball on the floor and get to the hoop. Crash the boards. We saw him crash the boards a lot last night. The putback dunk right before the end of the half. He was, he was, a, he was engaged. LeBron started slow, picked it up. Kyle Kuzma made some big shots. But the biggest thing that I like, what I like what, most, what I saw, was Danny Green. We had a Danny Green sighting. The first time we <laughs> saw him down in the bubble. Because, Chris, if he's not knocking down threes, he's not the defender that he once was, he becomes a liability. Because now they're just going to clog the paint, not let LeBron drive, and the double team going to come off of his guy to hit double down on AD because he's not knocking down shots consistently. Mm. Consistent, consistently. But I like what I saw offensively, but I'm concerned defensively. Mm. You can't tell me, well, they ain't got nothing to play for. They clinch. At some point in time, you say, you know what? This guy ain't finna just drive by me and go just lay it up. Mm. So, Shannon Sharp, does that mean, bottom line, you're now picking the Clippers no, over that, the that's, Lakers? That's, <laughs> you're making the case. Shannon sounds scared. Yeah. You definitely do not sound confident. Mm. I don't know. With good reason. Hold on. I just said, I said I'm concerned. I, I, I like what I saw offensively, <laughs> but I don't like what I saw defensively when you're going against backups. You give up 30-plus points in the fourth quarter to backups. No, that'll get you I beat. tell you, some of those guys were Keta Bates, I mean, I, I, these guys were coming out of nowhere, and it's like balling. Yes. I was like, wow. P.J. Dozier, they, mm. they were making them look good. You're right about that. Mm. So the good news last night was <laughs> the Lakers played by far their best offensive game in the bubble. The bad news was the Lakers <laughs> played by far their worst defensive game of the season, <laughs> the whole season, because remember, Shannon, that they couldn't stop the starters either. So no. the starters were on the floor for about three quarters. They're all playing like 22, 23 minutes. Mm -hmm. And look what they did combined. The starters last night went 24 of 38. That's 63%. That will get you a big L hung around your neck every time if yes. you're going to play that bad a defense, that, that nonchalant, that uncommitted of defense. And then... The backups come in, and to your point, it's like, who are these people? And and the backups are going three of four, three of four, three of four, three of five. And and poor Bull Bull took one shot in the fourth quarter. And I like his game, but he you, he's 20 years old, and he's out there against LeBron and AD, and he's just a little lost because uh, there's not a lot of meat on those bones yet. If he gets a little meat, he's got some game because he's got guard skills at seven feet two. Yeah, he's like you about seven two, about 185. <laughs> is he is he 185? I'm not sure he's 185. But but the point is, 
they're just lighting up the Lakers, and the Lakers are having fun. LeBron got a hot hand. I liked it. He got in the flow. He got some rhythm. He was shooting that sort of limp-wristed shot that when, when he gets it flowing, it looks good. And it started looking good, and he started swishing it, which brings me to the last shot. And I just expected they would run a play for LeBron. He was cooking. He'd made two threes in the, in the fourth quarter. There's nobody on that second unit that can keep him from the rim. So I thought, okay, just drive it and get to the line. Surely you could make one free throw out or two to win the game. Or if you, you're feeling really good about yourself, just pull up and shoot it and win it. And yet they run up call play. Vogel gets away with calling a play in the sideline huddle, not for LeBron, but for Kyle Kuzma. And I'm thinking, is Vogel, is, is LeBron going to fire him after the game? Because yeah. remember what happened in Chicago at that playoff game? Remember that? Yep. When LeBron said, get out of my way, David give me that. David Blatt called the play for Kyrie on the inbounds play down under the basket. Yep. And LeBron, to his credit, got mad. I love LeBron mad when he plays mad. And he just took it and shot it. It wasn't a three, remember? It's, it was two it's just, just from it, deep, just it was a deep two. D deep two. Right. But he makes it to win the, the it was a really a Pivotal crucial game, play yes. yeah, at, at Chicago against Derrick Rose and company. So the point was, LeBron seemed totally cool with, they called a play that they practiced early in the bubble in which he inbounds to Anthony. And I thought Anthony would just kick it right back to mm -hmm. LeBron or go pick for him or whatever. And Kuzma curls off Anthony and gets a pretty wide open look until Bowl Bowl said, uh-oh, I got to get out there. And he makes a flying leap at Kuzma, who had to launch it a little higher than I think he wanted to, which gave it a little more arc and trajectory, and he ripped it clean. And I've been saying to you guys for months, he's the closer on this team because he's got the right mentality for him. He's got dog in him, plus he's got... As, as one of the Cowboys once said of Clint Longley back in the day when he threw a touchdown pass to win a Thanksgiving game, it was the triumph of an uncluttered mind. <laughs> and I think Kyle's got an uncluttered young mind where he just doesn't care. If he misses, it goes in one eye and out the other. He, he has no memory. He just keeps firing. And that's the guy who should be closing for the Lakers. So I, I liked it as long as LeBron is cool with the fact the ball got taken out of his hands to end the game, and he ended it. We took it out of our hands. Yep. So don't, don't see so you. So you called the Chris, play. Chris, you see what he tried to do? I mean, yeah, the guy yeah. made a shot. I'm, now he's trying to call a decision. Well, I'm with you, Shady. Because here's the thing, and you brought up the, the situation in Chicago years back. That was obviously a playoff game. That was a huge game. This was a, situ this was a meaningless game, really, for the Lakers. Now, they, they wanted to come out and play well. And, and like you guys said, they did offensively, not defensively. But they got the number one seed locked up. This was a game they didn't have to win. So what better opportunity than to get a young kid some confidence? And you're right, he's confident no matter what. <laughs> but give him a chance. This is his first shot like this that he's hit all year. Game winner, that type of shot. So get him the ball. LeBron's delivered in those situations before many times. You know he can do it. Get it to Kuzma, let him feel that, that pressure and hit a shot. So I thought it was perfect. If this was a playoff game, I'm not sure they call that. But in this situation, it was good and the play was ran perfectly. So I think that was by design. And, and plus, one more thing, we finally got AD and LeBron to play well together in the exact same game. Now, wait a second. I'll give you AD in the first half because, what was he, 17 and 7? Mm -hmm. In the second yep. half, he gets zero rebounds and is one for four from the floor. He got to the free throw line, yeah. but still. He aggressive. I don't aggressive. know. He aggressive. pushed a button in the first half, and he came to aggressive. play. He let the dogs out, right? Yeah. I don't know. But you saw old goat. Yeah. 29 and 12. Yeah. His eyes lit up, though, when he saw Bo Bo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bo Bo. Bo Bo. I've seen bigger piano legs, but that's your... <laughs> <laughs> He all late. But he got about... ability. Skip said, well, he yeah. needed to gain some weight. Skip, did you, do you remember his dad? He's already bigger than his dad ever was. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure there's going to be weight, <laughs> yeah. The three from Kuzma, though, was the first time I was like, all right, I miss the fans. Because that would have been so awesome to have that yeah. reaction. But what are you going to do? No mercy. Okay, the Clippers are one step closer to being at full strength in the bubble. In a series of posts, Montrezl Harrell announced his arrival in Orlando yesterday. Harrell will have to quarantine for four days before he officially joins his teammates on the court. The forward has been away from the bubble since July 17th. So, Chris, 
Broussard is still with us. Chris, how much will he help and how quickly? Oh, he's going to help tremendously. And you mentioned his social media posts, Jen. One of his posts, he said, I'm a whole different kill now. That's a direct quote. I love the sentiment there. I love the abonics of it, everything. That is the attitude that Montrez Harrell brings to the Clippers. And, and I think that's one of the advantages they have over the Lakers is they've got that nastiness and that dog, whether it's Harrell, whether it's Kawhi, whether it's Marcus Morris now, obviously Pat Beverly. So he just brings more of that. And remember, he's in a contract year too. He should be up for a huge payday. So I think he's going to bring his best game his work ethic is is really incredible. So I would think when he was in out of the bubble that he probably was keeping himself in shape. We know he was mourning the death of his grandmother. But if he was staying in shape, then I think he's going to come back and play well because his game's not really based on skill. I mean, he's got some decent skills, but his is based on hustle, heart, toughness, things like that. So I think he should be able to get in and contribute pretty quickly. And so that's what I like about what he brings. But their bench, remember, when they played the Lakers in the first game of the bubble, the Lakers won that game because of their bench. The Clippers starters outplayed the Lakers starters, but the Lakers bench had a huge advantage. Now you'll have Lou Williams, who wasn't in that game, and Montrez Harrell. They both give you 18 a night. Their bench will not get outplayed by anyone. So that's the other thing. The only potential negative, is that you've got players now who are used to playing minutes without Hero. And I don't know how deep Doc's going to go in the playoffs. Will he go eight deep, nine deep? I can't. I don't know if he'll go deeper than that. But, you know, where does that leave, you know, a Rodney Magru Magruder and, and Patrick Patterson, Jermichael Green, and even Reggie Jackson, even though he's a guard? I mean, they're going to get minutes, but not probably what they've been used to so how do they handle that? And then how do they play in their fewer minutes? So that's the only potential negative is that Doc's got a lot of people to kind of work in, in and out of his rotation. But overall, this is clearly a big plus. Well, he's a huge addition. Um, he's the energy. Uh, they've missed his energy. They've missed his rim protection. He's the slightly the third leading scorer on their team. And what he does is that the 50-50 ball, he chases down 85, 90% of those. Uh, he gives you things that just no one, none, none of the other bigs can provide. Uh, we don't know. Zubas has played well in the bubble, but he's not going to play more minutes than, than Trez once Trez get back into the lineup. Noah was a nice addition, but I don't see uh, Noah playing unless it's a blowout. He's not going to get any minutes. Those minutes are going back to Trez Harrell. But like I said, Skip, yeah, uh, guys, he's the rebounding guy. He's the second po chance points guy. He's the guy that gets the loose ball, and all of a sudden he kicks the, kicks the ball to a wide-open Paul George, to a wide-open Kawhi or Shamit, and one of those guys knocked down a three where before he was there, those were the loose balls that the opposing team got to. Now there's turns into second-chance points. Uh, Doc says he hopes he'll be cleared uh, for the season finale. I know you mentioned that he likes to stay in shape, he works out, but you only get in shape playing the sport that you actually play. I hear guys tell me, oh, he's in the best shape. Uh, were you playing football? <laughs> you weren't out there diving around on the floor with... You're in basketball shape. He wasn't diving on no floor, trust me, Chris. Uh, and the thing you have to be careful of when you've been away for this length of time, even though you think you've been working out, you end up getting these soft tissue injuries. You get a calf injury, you get a hamstring or quad, something. So Jadok is going to be careful with him. He hopes he can get him in and gradually build him up. But Trez Harrell, he's a monster. And as you said, normally guys that are in contract years, they play extraordinary to get that payday. But and when he gets his payday, don't think he's going to back off. But he's due for one, and I expect him to play well. Mm. So, as much as I love the Clippers, as much as I really love Trez, averaging 19 and 7 with two assists, those are six-man-of-the-year kind of numbers. Yes. Yeah. As much as I love all that, I do not love this scenario for the Clippers. They have now played 70 games. I don't know if Trez is going to play in that last game or not. I'm going to guess not. But the point is, they've played, they will have played 72 total games. Mm -hmm. Their full roster will have been on the floor ready to play together 12 total times. That's a recipe for playoff disaster. 
Can you just flip the switch and get everybody in gear and in rhythm and in rotation? I, I don't know. I've never seen things quite like this, where you're clearly the deepest team. You just got max deep mm -hmm. by add, getting Trez back right. on top of Lou. And, and now what? H how do you figure out how to play together in a new rotation as the playoffs start? And I don't know who they're going to draw in the first round. Probably uh, Dallas. Pr probably. But you better be ready because those guys, they can, can, come, they, yeah. they can play. Right. And my point is, are you going to be really ready to play? I, I don't know. This, this is just like c complete throw it up in the air and see where it all lands because I'm sure da uh, Doc Rivers is losing some sleep at night trying to figure out what's my rotation and how much can I trust even Lou and Trez to come off the bench and give me the kind of impact they used to give me. Well, Trez is a guy, uh, uh, Chris, that you don't really, they don't have to run a whole lot of plays for him because he's going right. to get his stuff, he's going to get his stuff off the rim. He's going to get his stuff by running the floor and filling the lane. Yeah, they'll, they'll dump it down to him occasionally to, to show the hard work. He block a shot on one end, and it's like, okay, you did a good job here. Take this, and he go to work. But for the most part, the ball's going to be in Paul George. It's going to be in Kawhi. It's going to be in Lou. It's going to be in Lou's hand. And down the stretch, he'll be in there. He'll be in that closing lineup. But the ball is going to be in one of those three guys' hands, and he's going to be crashing the board trying to get second chance points. Guys, he going to be in playoff shape. Oh, he'll get. I mean, by the time by the time it really matters. I think right. he'll maybe, be there. Maybe in the second round, yeah. I would give yeah. him yeah, that. Yeah, second but, round. Yeah. He won't be ready for the first round. No. But Dallas, I think, even as good as Dallas is, I think they should be able to take care of Dallas pretty easily because, you know, they just don't have the toughness or the experience that the Clippers have. Skip, you mentioned I, I, that's going to be the Clippers' biggest challenge is that they are going into these playoffs really with – in the same situation they were in in the regular season. And they had hoped that these eight games would be an opportunity to get yep. some continuity, right? Get these all your best players playing together at the same time, which they didn't get a chance to do in the regular season. And now they won't have that chance. Now, in the, in the regular season, it worked out. You know, when Kawhi came back after missing a game, it seemed like he fit in smoothly. When Patrick Beverly came back, he fit in seamlessly. Same with Paul George. But it's a different animal in the playoffs. That's going to, to me, that's their biggest challenge. Are there any hiccups just because you haven't played together a lot with your best players? Outside of that, if they, if they get through that well, then I don't see any problems for them. Mm. I just don't want to see them get knocked out in the first or second round and hear everybody say, well, we, we just didn't have time this year. We'll get them next year. Because feeling like we'll get them next year is going to be the the underlying motto of this playoff. No, nah, we don't. I'm tired of the excuses mm -hmm. because that's what we seem to do. Every time, the, see, when the Clippers win, you see that's the depth that they have. But when they lose, it's because they haven't played together. Stop that. Mm -hmm. Stop it. We don't, do, we don't do excuses here. Mm -hmm. You win or lose, at the end of the day, we're going to win or we're going to lose. And we're not going to be making excuses, Kim, because I noticed you and Chris Bissard, y'all been doing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know they only played 12 games together. Mm -hmm. they only no, did I, I'm not saying it's an excuse. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. like I said, they played well in the regular season. Okay, okay. And so they, it, despite this, and, and cl if they get Denver in the second round, Denver's in the same boat kind yeah. of. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they said Gary Harris, Will Barton's out. Where, what's Michael Porter Jr.'s role now? Oh, Michael Is Porter Jr. ain't coming out of the starting lineup. You forget that. Right. But, <laughs> I don't know why the other guys. Like Harris likes to score. Barton likes to score. Jamal Murray likes to score. Obviously, you got Jokic. Like, so I, they've got the same issues as the Clippers. A lot of depth and a lot of guys that deserve to play. But who you? who's the rotation mm. going to be? So I think the Clippers just need to be rolling by the time they get the Lakers mm. in the conference finals. And that goes for both teams, to be honest. They kind of can work out the kinks in those first two rounds. So speaking of excuses, LeBron has sure been whining a lot about how uh -oh, tough man. life oh, is man. in the yeah, bubble. So it's so <laughs> tough. I'm away from my wife and kids. It's hard. We can't eat the right things here. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're getting cabin fever. You see, Stop I, it. Did you see the way he showed up at the game? Do it look like he been, just, he been eating bad to you, Skip? Uh, you saw the way he showed up at the game, right? We're going to talk about that later. <laughs> in his hotel room. Yeah. He did like 500 hours before he, got him, before he came to the stadium. Don't get any ideas, you two. I might, yeah, hey. No ideas out of that look. I might pull old Butch Lewis. You uh -huh. remember Butch Lewis? Don't you? <laughs> we don't need any it's of that around time. here. <laughs> Chris Broussard, always a pleasure. We'll check in with you soon. All right, guys. No mercy. Patriots offensive coordinator Josh McDaniel said 
They are in the middle of getting Cam Newton caught up, but called the veteran quarterback a very smart football player. Daniels also talked about the benefits of working with other QBs when Brady missed time. Daniels said, quote, I'm thankful for the experiences that I've had when I didn't have Tom. Huh. Shannon, you agree? Yes. Mm. Uh, and Skip, I, I believe Josh McDaniels is a better offensive coordinator than he is a head coach. He has a problem relating to people. So to be up there in front of a room and you got to be responsible for all 53 as opposed to just an offensive side of the football is something entirely different. But, you know, having to coach Tom, you coach Tom one way, you call plays one way. Um, you coach Jimmy G, mm. call plays, you coach a certain way. And then you get Jacoby Brissett. You also had Matt Castle in that equation, Skip. You got Matt Castle paid. Matt, Matt Castle got paid because you put him in the ideal situation. And I can assure you, the plays that they were calling for Tom Brady, they didn't necessarily call or run the same plays that they mm -hmm. ran for Matt Castle. And that just goes to show you, because a lot of times, Skip, you know, coaches get set in their ways. This is my offense. This is what we run. We're going to run it. Mm -hmm. And before long, you find yourself out on the street and you, you're doing something else other than being a head coach. But I like, I, I like that he said this because that's absolutely correct, Skip. And he has background. He has success with other players. Now, has it been long-term success? No, because we haven't seen it. Because even though, uh, what, they go 11-5, and five, they still missed the playoffs that year with Matt Castle. Mm -hmm. And so, and, he, and uh, they only played four games without Tom in, what, 2016? It was mm -hmm. three and one. So, but he has had success. So that's something that he can fall back on. And Cam, you know, with Cam, Cam is a, is a, is a different, is a unique breed. He's never had a player like Cam yep. that have the mobility, that has the arm talent, has the strength, and so you can move the pocket, you can do some things differently. So I believe he'll call plays differently, Skip. The thing that sets Kyle Shanahan apart as an offensive mind, look at what he did with RG3. They go from mid-20s to sixth in offense. Look at what he does with Matt Ryan. Takes mm -hmm. Matt Ryan, a middle-of-the-road quarterback, turns him into an MVP. Gets Jimmy Garoppolo, and he gets to the Super Bowl. Mm. So when you're good, when you are good at your job and your offensive coordinator, Skip, you find ways. And look, because remember when Jimmy G got hurt, Skip? He was taking guys, C.J. Beth, and he was taking guys like, huh? How did he get him to throw for 300? How did they win a game with that guy? Mm -hmm. I believe Josh McDaniel can do the same thing with Cam Newton. Mm -hmm. He'll find ways to get the best out of Cam Newton. And uh, you know, as a matter of fact, Mm. I don't want out of my bet now. Good. I don't want out I of love my bet. Want to triple it? Nope, no, I don't okay. want to triple it. I want to stay right where I am. By the way, our bet is that Tampa Bay or Tampa Bay will win more games than Belichick will this year in New England with whomever the starting quarterback is, and I still don't know. Is it Cam? Is it Stid? What about all them opt out? Yeah. Uh, that should be a caveat be a problem. Something. And that leads to my theme <laughs> about this theme. This theme of I've done this before from Josh McDaniels does not hold water for me because he did it before with twice or five times or ten times the supporting cast that's left in the cupboard right now for Cam Newton. Right. Because look back at Matt Castle, 2008. I'm going to remind everybody, Matt Castle did go on to Kansas City and make a Pro Bowl right. for the Chiefs. Yeah. So he was pretty good, yeah. right? Yeah. Think of the 2008 team. Think of they went 10-5 and five with Matt Castle because right. Brady technically started right. the opener or whatever. Right. But they had this guy, Randy Moss, and they had Wes Welker, and uh, they, they had this guy named Benjamin Watson, who was only 28 instead of last year, 39 at right. tight end. Mm -hmm. And they had Sammy Morris and Kevin Falk both running it and catching it, and Ben Jarvis Green Ellis was also running mm -hmm. it. So they were pretty loaded there. And then now let's go to the defense, 2008. It's Mayo, it's Brewski, it's Wilfork, it's Vrabel, it's Seymour, it's Rodney Harrison. It's a cavalcade of stars on the defensive side, and they don't have those guys now. No. Then let's go to 2016. It's still Edelman and Amendola and Hogan and Gronk, right? Yep. And then you look at the defensive side, and it's McCourty and Hightower and Malcolm Butler and Chung and Ninkovich and Trey Flowers and Chris Long and Jamie Collins and Landon Roberts and Deron Harmon and Kyle Van Oy. They're all there, and they're, they're not here anymore, right? Oh. Except for McCourty, right, and yep. Chung if Chung's eligible to play, okay? He opted out, though. Yeah. Oh, he opted, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's completely yeah, gone, he, right? Okay. Opted out, right. Yeah. okay, so uh, that list I just read, there's only one guy left, and that's well, the two McCordys, yeah, right? right? Okay, so my point is, I feel sorry for Cam if he's going to start for this team because he's going to look around and say, 
We're not New England anymore. Where's the firepower on defense? Where, where are my receivers? You got a beat up, broken down Edelman, and he's still your number one choice. He might not be beat up and broken. Okay, well, you better hope. He just led the well, league in drops. This, is what, this is what we know about coaches. All coaches want to prove they're more than a player. Mm -hmm. It's just like players want to prove they're more than coaches. Coach Belichick wants to prove that he's more than Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady wants to prove that he's more than Coach Belichick. Josh McDaniels wants to prove that I'm a good offense. I'm a great sure. offense coordinator. Minus Tom Brady. Okay. And here's his opportunity. He's like, we've, we've seen flashes, but can you put together, can you do it with this? Can you do it with Cam Newton? So, minus Gronk, my, minus Hogan, minus Amendola, minus, minus, minus. Who's make left? Make it work. Who's left? Make it work. Okay, well, if they can make the playoffs with this team, two things are going to happen. Cam's going to be the MVP, and Belichick is going to repolish his genius like never before. And Josh, too. What did he repolish it for? Uh, because it was gravely doubted last no, year. No, it wasn't. Yeah. No. All he, I know he let Matthew Fitzpatrick go. I mean, uh, who was it? Yeah, uh. Ryan, Fitz Ryan, Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick go 75 yards and 13 plays to knock him out of the two seed? What am I talking he about? He said I held a team yeah. to zero points in the yeah. second half and lost. Whew. That's what I did. Really? Held a team to zero, and, uh. and, and you gave up a pick six. Uh. Well, that ended the game. Well, well, hold on. What about that time we was on the, we was on like the, uh, the three-yard line and you couldn't get us in the end zone? Mm. All I know is you can't beat the Dolphins for the two seed. That's on Belichick. Yeah, that's on, you gave him uh, a pass. Uh, that. that's Tom Brady. Uh. Tom Brady played. You remember he gave that, that pick six to Eric Flowers. Mm. So coach, coach, coach Belichick said, I didn't factor in my defense having to play like that. Tom Brady did the most with the least in his entire career last year, and now that responsibility falls to Cam Newton. That's what Coach Belichick said. Mm. I, did the, I did the most with the least last year. Mm. <laughs> that was, that, you know what? Did you, were you in this meeting, you private conversation? Because mm. I know that you've been, you've been spitting private conversation. Mm. That's what Dane say. No, that's, so Coach, that's, he spat it. I didn't spit it. Because Coach Belichick, because that's exactly what Coach Belichick said. Really? I got the most out of the leash last year. Is that right? Yeah. Huh. Well, guess what? It was rats jumping off a sinking ship because all that leashed on defense, <laughs> a bunch of them are gone. <laughs> <laughs> no mercy. All right, the Phoenix Suns have remained red hot in the bubble thanks to Devin Booker. Booker led his team with 35 points last night on the way to a 128-101 to win over the Thunder. The Suns are now a perfect 6-0 since play has resumed in the bubble and are only a game back of the Grizzlies for the ace spot in the West. So, Shannon, are the Suns real or just a mirage? No, I'm not buying them as a serious playoff threat. They mean they would be the ace seed. They would get swept. They're not a, the threat that Portland is. Um, I know Aiden has been a monster inside, but Devin Booker's legit, Skip. If you go, Skip, we've seen a lot of guys accidentally get 50. You don't accidentally get 70. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, you you in rare fire there to get 70 points. You're up there mm -hmm. with the, the Kobe, the Chamberlain, I think Elgin Baylor, David Thompson. Those are only four or five, got four guys that's ever got 70. And he did it at 22. So Devin Booker's legit. Uh, you know, we've seen him go off and get these huge numbers. He can score against anybody. And since he's been in the bubble, maybe because, Skip, you know, the pandemic and everybody craving sport, you get an opportunity to see and you're sitting down and watching the games. But if you follow basketball like you and I do, we know what he can. He, he's, a, he's a walking bucket. That's what he is. He can just score. And Kobe is, is his hero. A lot of these guys, Skip, but Kobe is their guy. So he's going to get his, he's gonna get his points. But, Skip, no, they're not a serious threat to the – the Lakers have already beat him three times this year by an average margin of 14 points. They're not the threat – to the Lakers that Portland is because of, of, of Nurkic and because of Dame and CJ and Melo. But do I think they could cause Portland some problems and, and possibly wrestle that? Because I do believe it's going to be the playing game is going to be between them and, 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 um, and Portland's game. Do you? Yes, I do. The Suns team, I keep watching every night. I watched them against Oklahoma City, even though Oklahoma City was very shorthanded. They didn't have Steven Adams, Shea Gilders, Alexander, Gallinari, Schroeder. Those guys didn't play. But still, they were down 15 in the first quarter because DeAndre Ayton forgot, he said, to take his COVID test. And once he started the second quarter, they roared and just steamrolled Oklahoma City. Something is going on with this team. And I told you, after they barely beat the Clippers... These guys attack you on both ends. They attack you on defense. As, as Monty Williams said, they're, they're, he's, he's an outstanding coach. Yeah, like one, one of the best men in, that you'll ever mm -hmm. find. 
as he said, it's like we had a second training camp and, and we flipped the switch into this bubble. And if you look what they're doing in the bubble, they're, they have the best point differential. They're tied for first in rebounding differential, so they're attacking the glass. They're fourth in opponent scoring, so they're playing high-level mm -hmm. defense. They're fourth in three-point shooting, and they're number one in free-throw shooting. Yeah. So it's all coming together in every way, shape, and form. All the little things, rebounding and free-throw making. Yeah, that's how you high. win games down the that's stretch. You win. Free-throws. Okay. They have a superstar, obviously, in Devin Booker. He's averaging 30 a game in the bubble. And they have a star on the rise in DeAndre Ayton, who's averaging 17 and 9 in the bubble. Cameron Johnson is 14 and 7. These are all in the bubble, mm -hmm. but this is what's happening. That's right. why they've won six straight games. Sorry, he's a, he's a very solid player. Yeah. 14 and 7. Rubio's 13 and 7 assists. Cameron Payne off the scrap heap in Oklahoma City is averaging 11. Mikel Bridges is averaging 11. And Javon Carter comes in and just D's people up, and he can rain threes on you. So I love this rotation that they have, and I love how hard they play every night. And if they somehow, I think they're going to win their last two games in part because people aren't going to play their starters. Right. So it's 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 like the skids are greased for them to be eight no, and then right. I don't know how it's going to fall out at I, the end. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Memphis skip. Memphis once they lost that game, they had remember they had that big lead to start out with against Portland. Yeah. And they lost that one, and it just seems it went downhill from there. I don't believe they can hold on to that eight seed. I believe they're going to probably lose their last two. I believe Phoenix will, uh, will win out, and them in Portland will have the play. Okay, in. who's going to be the eight and the nine? I got I, right now. I got Portland at eight. Do I, you? you know, yeah, I got Portland at eight, and uh, but I think Portland doesn't Portland play Portland play somebody tough. Like you say, we don't know who's going to play it at the end. I don't because know who's going to play their if starters. I'm, if I'm locked yeah. into a position, why yeah. am I going to go out there and run the risk of getting somebody hurt? Yeah, and so that's what we don't know. But I do believe that Phoenix will going to win their last two and they're going to play somebody. Well, and, Portland and has Dallas and Brooklyn, and, and Brooklyn can be tough because yeah. they, they got snipers everywhere. The question is, does Brooklyn, what, is, what does Brooklyn have to play for? Know. Are they locked in? Are they're they locked, locked in? in. Mm -hmm. So the point is, if these guys, these Phoenix Suns, get mm -hmm. to the Lakers, they can at least win one game. They win the game. Yep. We got we got it. It. Do, do is on it. Do the do for a I, I got one we game. Go to two. We got to huh? go to two. Two cases? Yeah. Oh, good. You're I gotta, cause I gotta, cause I gotta get down under thirty. Cause I feel by the time I get to the Clippers, I'm gonna show up all like fifteen cases to the middle of the really? table. Really? Yeah. Okay. So the same Lakers you were down on last night because they played no defense are going to sweep this team that is sweeping the bubble. That's what you're telling yeah. me. I love the, this. The, the sweepers will get swept. Really? Yeah. Okay. Eight no, and and they'll get a ninth win in the bubble against the Lakers. I'd watch this. No, they get no yeah. Yeah. You know better. Uh, I well, okay, know what are they going to do with Brian? Huh? Who going to do something with Brian? Bridges. He can guard. He's a big kid. Watch. Watch. Aiton can rim protect. Oh, yeah. We well, we got a bunch of rim. Uh, we, uh, uh, Dwight did a good job last night. He what? did. It's been good. JaVale's been pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Aiton's better than either one of them. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, and, and Dwight's age, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got this. One mm. case on one win. Two cases. Two cases on one run. Okay. I'll take it. I feel Done. like I need Thank to you. help you out here, Shannon. This doesn't feel like a good bet for you. It's you haven't been bet. doing so good lately with these It's bets. a great bet. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm with Skip. Uh, I have more confidence there. No mercy. LeBron said Kuzma, quote, has to be our third best player. If I'm struggling or if AD is struggling, he has to be our second best player on any given night. We can't win a championship if Kuz doesn't play well. Shannon, scale of 1 to 10, how much do you trust Kyle Kuzma going into the playoffs? Five, six. I can't cons I can't count on him to consistently give me 20 a night. Mm. So I'm supposed to blaze everything after what I just seen, what I saw last night. He had a three-pointer. He had a game-winning shot. But where is that? He, th that was only his, what, fourth or fifth 25-point game all season long. Skip, I can't base. I, I, I'm not going to let one moment cloud mm -hmm. my judgment in what I've seen all season long. Mm -hmm. And I have not seen the consistency from Kyle Kuzma that would say, you know what? Okay. That's the third option. Mm -hmm. Since LeBron has joined, he's a 31% three-point shooter. And now all of a sudden, I'm supposed to get my hopes up. Like, yep, we're there now. He played well. And he's played well. That's Skip, that was one of the reasons why they weren't willing to include him in the trade. Mm. Because originally, remember, they wanted him. But he played well with LeBron. He can catch and shoot. He can play off the ball. He doesn't necessarily need the ball. Now, when he gave it to him, he, you might not get it back. Mm. There's a good chance 
You pass him the ball, he's not passing it back. But, Skip, I, I, I can't base put all my eggs in his basket because he had one shining moment last night. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say five or six. I need to see consistency. Forget the game-winning shot. I need to see because I've seen some seven points, some, some, some 11 points with three or 18 shooting, mm -hmm. and that won't cut it. So for me, five or six, but I like what I saw last night. Let me see a little bit more consistency. Mm -hmm. Not game-winning shots, but let me see 15 to 20 points on a consistent basis, and then you can get my, mm -hmm. you get my belief system on mm -hmm. Your belief system better go up to a six or you ain't winning no game. <laughs> right? Well, he, better, he better make some shots to get my belief system up to an eight. Yep. I'm going to say this again, and I've been saying it all year. The Lakers will go as far as Kyle Kuzma takes them. And I know he's not LeBron and he's not Anthony Davis, but he is the huge X factor here. He has to take and make big shots yeah. in key moments for this team to go places, mm -hmm. to go win the championship. Right to get past the Clippers, we believe, in the West, mm -hmm. and get past whoever. Maybe it's Toronto, but it's up to Kyle Kuzma because there are too many stretches where you don't have enough LeBron and you don't have enough AD, and I still wonder about Anthony just comes and he goes. Last night he came and then he went in the mm -hmm. second half. But this guy, I believe, can be your closer, but they don't feature him as the closer until they finally, Vogel called his number last night, and he came through. Well, it's a little late in the game to say, oh, let's make him our closer. That should have been happening all year. No, he shouldn't have. Stop. Okay, well, that's what I believe because I trust him to make big shots. This guy. Skip, he's only made, Skip, that was, the, that was his first one. He's only, I mean, come on. But they cut him out. They, they cut him out of the rotation. Look at his numbers. Look yeah. at the, the first year with LeBron, he averaged 19 and 6 and 3 assists. Right. That's pretty great. Right. And then this year it fell to 13, 5, and 1. Yeah, his minutes, Everything I, fell off. I mean, so what? So what? You, you want to get him, you want to get him AD minutes? He should have been your third wheel, your third star. They your, tried. Your, your X factor. Well, there's something. And, and remember, the breaking point, may, maybe the, the bridge burner, was that his trainer, who happens to be Kawhi's trainer, posted out of nowhere after, was it the... Second or the first? I can't remember. It, was the it, first might, it might have been the first game. After the first game, that he was all about Kawhi doing work on LeBron. Right. Remember that? Yeah. I can't remember the specifics. Somebody's that. talking, but other somebody putting yeah. in work, but somebody talking about right. it. Right. Yeah. Now, now tell me I'm wrong. He was daring people on yeah. whatever. I got time media. because he's yeah. on vacation. I, I got think. time. Tell me I'm wrong. And and again, he does train Kawhi, but he also trains the guy who's the teammate of LeBron's, and I thought that was. A do not invite a moment where uh, you don't we, don't, we don't do that. I mean, we don't skip. After Dan Gibber said those awful things about mm. us, we went back. Mm. We, 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 we're not vengeful. I know, but you don't have to play with Dan Gilbert on your team. He just sits above it all, looks down on it. But that's what LeBron you says. You can control I'm, the LeBron team. LeBron I'm, I'm, I'm above that freight. What y'all talking about? Why would I do? Why would I compare myself to Kawhi? Mm. Even somebody pairing Kawhi to me is beneath me. Mm -hmm. So why would I respond? Why would I have a response to that? Coos, uh, just do what you're supposed to do. We're going to give you opportunity to succeed because, Skip, remember Anthony Davis was out for a couple... That was Coos' opportunity to go on and give us that 25 because now you're getting AD minutes. Mm. What do you do with those minutes? Okay, LeBron says the right things, but he does not embrace him. I don't think he went out of his way to incorporate him as the distinct third option yeah, we did. or a closing option. Why do you think he's there? Why do you think he's there? Well, I don't know. Why do you think? Why do you think Kyle Kuzma is still there? Mm. We wanted him there. We or you couldn't find the right deal. We wanted him. Maybe Rob Polinka just said, I don't love what I'm getting back because maybe the league had soured because they thought, well, if the king is sour on him, we're sour on nah. him. No. Remember, I thought he was going at the trade deadline. No, nah, we held on to it. Yep. So that, that, that we called him up. Say, Coos, we not going to, you know, we're going to hold on to you because we believe in you. Mm. Now, don't Do you really him. believe or you just, are you afraid he'll come back to haunt you? Skip, when has anybody ever came back to haunt LeBron? Name the time. Mm. The guy that was on our team that left and came back to haunt us. Mm. Kyrie will. <laughs> oh, he will. Wait, wait until next year. Oh, would mm. that be Kyrie or that be KD? Mm.
a little of both. Uh, exactly. A lot of both. <laughs> so the point is, what I love about Kyle Kuzma is he, he has this hugely advantageous lack of conscience. He just doesn't care. Yeah. He, he'll take the shot and forget the shot if it misses. He'll just shoot it again and again and again. But you have to incorporate him and you have to call his number in key moments to, to make him feel like he's part of the deal yeah. here. He's but, the deal closer. Yeah, now, if you told me Kyrie, what kind of confidence I got in Kyrie, and I see mm -hmm. nine, now you're talking about nine, ten. Mm -hmm. Okay, what kind of confidence I got in D Wade? Now you're talking about nine or ten. You ask me what kind of my confidence level in Kyle Kuzma? Mm -hmm. Well, that's because you, you, you sense from LeBron's body language or even AD's body language they don't have any confidence yeah. in it. We, we, we told uh, uh, Frankie V it would be okay if Kuz took the last shot. We passed AD the ball. Mm -hmm. LeBron is over in the back. He already know. Mm -hmm. He got the one finger up scale. How much more confidence you want me to have? That seems like a nine on a scale of ten. That's him. You asked me. So maybe that was the breakthrough, <laughs> right? A breakthrough <laughs> moment? Oh, Skip. Those guys are there. Maybe they've seen Kuz take those shots in practice, make those shots in practice. Okay, Skip, I just all I can base it on is what I see in the game. And I've seen far too many times. I haven't seen the consistent level. Now, I've, I've seen times where, where Kuz is, if he's not playing well offensively, he gets after that as a defensive end. And then I've seen other times he doesn't have it going on the offensive end. And he's like, well, I ain't playing defense either. I can't make a shot. I ain't doing anything. Mm. So that's my level right now. Sometimes this kid posts something on social that I sit back and shake my head and say, what are you thinking? And then it dawns on me. He, he's not thinking. Well, what, he what, just doesn't think, color, which is a good thing. What color was his hair when he posted? Was it pink? Was it green? Was it blue? Was it red? I just need to know. All of which is why <laughs> he will take and make the big shot with no conscience. Skip. No memory. He just takes it and makes it. He can shoot it under pressure. Most of the guys that, that do well in the playoffs, Skip, they don't have, I mean, I mean, you look at the guys that win the finals MVP. Every, for every, there's only been one Dennis Rodman. Mm -hmm. That one five that, that played well, and he was a rebounding guy. But most of the guys, Skip, they, they ain't do all that. They got no funny hairstyle and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. They just come to play basketball. Mm -hmm. So you tried a game back to make Quinn Cook your closer. You did. And he'd made five of seven threes, and then LeBron said, here, here's another chance. Down the stretch against Indiana, nope. We no. might, we might pull it out again. We might yeah. dust him off again. Yeah. There's a Quinn come well, in you, and hit the big three in the corner. dust him off because he got a DNP last night after playing, what, 35 minutes the, what, what, against what, Indiana. What are you doing? Well, Deion Waiters got a DNP uh, and then played and gave us some great production last night. Yeah. So you never know. I'm starting to question Frankie V, and he's going to be the yeah, all-time yeah. scapegoat. Yeah, I, I, I wrote so skip. Yeah. I all said this time. Early, I said this earlier. Our rotation's been some trash now. Yeah. I mean, we, we can't find a rotation. What rotation? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> never know who's going to be starting. <laughs> no mercy. LeBron and the Lakers both posted pictures of LeBron leaving the team hotel with an unbuttoned shirt with shout-outs to Miami for the look in the caption, Miami drip. How about that? Shannon? Like it, love it, hate it. Love it. Mm. Bad, 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 bad. Oh, is that why you yeah. unbutton the, yeah, you the first part? You, you, you were trying to go there, right? Yeah, if I want on telling me for the last two and a half hours, I'll yeah. hey, yeah. 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 Ain't no telling Don't. about me. Ain't no telling yeah. how I'm going to come out here. I love this, Skip. You see that? Mm. Look at good. 35. Mm. Look at like that. He's only 35. 35. Look at like that. Look like he's like 25. Mm. Really? Yeah. So if, if I walked in the front door one morning with my shirt completely unbuttoned, you would say, you're thirsty. Yeah, you're, you're looking for attention, yeah, you, yep, yep, right? Yep, yep. But that's okay. Yep, yep. You know what? LeBron James is like the magician who distracts the audience because against Indiana, he knew he just disappeared down the stretch. He even shot an air ball. The last three and a half minutes didn't attack the rim one time. Yep. So he says, I got to do a little sleight of hand here, what a do little what do do? slight of chest. I'll just unbutton all the way down. <laughs> I can get away with it because it's 105 degrees 105. outside. Yeah. Ooh. So uh, just stop it. It's okay. Just go play. That's all I care about. Well, if you come in here with your shirt unbuttoned, mm -hmm. clearly they didn't check you at the front for your yeah. temperature. Really? You bumped your head. You got a uh. fever. You got something going on. Yeah. I mean, still let the man be. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm. As a matter of fact, y'all might see me like that that weekend. Really? Oh. Yep. I'm uh, thinking about it. Weird. Manhattan Beach, here I come. Backyard? Nope. Yeah. I'm going to the beach. <laughs> I mean, wow, hold on. Why can't you do that? My nephew looking good. Really? Yeah. Uh. I believe in conspicuous consumption if do you, you have it flaunted. Okay. Well, 
Try it again. He should Man. go. He should come to every game like no, that. No, no, no. It worked the last night. The man work out hard. Good luck. Eat right. Does he? Live right. And he will show it off. Uh -huh. That's what you do, right? All right. Sometimes. I don't want to age either of you guys, but <laughs> please keep those uh, buttons going. LeBron is in a different Sorry. boat than both of you. That is it for Undisputed. Thank you for watching. We're back same time tomorrow morning. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>